holy crap. People persist in doubting the evidence. Don't run and hide. Don't be afraid. Don't turn away any longer. The truth will set you free. You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. We're turning all of our heart of towards the Earth on Dark Matter Radio. <laughs> and now, your host, the captain of conspiracy, the prince of paranormal. This ain't your daddy's radio network show. This is Jimmy Church Fade to Black. Right. Yeah. Fart up. All right. You know, just uh, just sitting here, this is Fade to Black. And looking at Tweet Deck blaze by. Michael Keane just tweeted. What do you think about David Paulides, Paulides, Paulides missing 411? I mean, isn't that his deal? I want you to clarify, Michael. This is Fade to Black. How you doing? This is Call In Thursday. This is your show. Live from the JP Motorsports Studios right here in Burbank, California. Roasting hot. I say it every night, but it is just blazing outside. Burbank, California. For KJCR and the Dark Matter Radio Network, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Call in to, or Thursday. Call in Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Feels like Tuesday. Feels like we got a week of shows in front of us, but I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Big salute to the proud men and women in uniform all around the world. Fighting the good fight for us. Without them, there is no me, there is no you, there is no us, and you could not hear me right now. Tonight's show is exactly what I'm talking about, freedom of speech. Let it all hang out. Today, my good friend, I've known this guy forever, guitarist John Five otherwise known as John Lowry. I couldn't believe it when he changed his name to John Five. I mean, I've known him as John Lowry for years. Great kid. Oh, my goodness. I think I met him when he was 18. Just a little kid. He's still little. He is 43 years old. And I saw that today, and I'm just, where, where did the time go? He was always in this circle of musicians here in L.A. He was always just the young kid, you know, that could play, but just just wanted to go play with every, you know, just just you know. But he was he was a kid to all of us. Anyway, played for Katie Lang. That's who we played was playing for when I met him. It was like his first gig, a shredder in Katie Lang's band, and she just recognized talent. And uh, man, but played with David Lee Roth, Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie. After Katie Lang, uh, when I started to go work for Rob Halford, uh, Rob got a demo tape and uh, played it for me one day in Phoenix, and said, "Check this out, Jim A. What do you think of this? What do you think of this?" Plays me this this demo. It was just music of uh, of of John John Five John Lowry, and I'm listening to it. And I'm thinking that is the greatest guitar player I've ever heard. Where is that stuff coming from? Whoa. And as a guitar player myself, you know, you just wonder, you know, how does somebody get that good? Where does that creativity come from? It floored me. Like the first time I heard like Randy Rhodes or Eddie Van Halen, it was like that good. And, uh, and it was John five. And so John ended up joining Rob's band and we did an album, uh, called, uh, Oh, geez. I can't even remember the name of the, uh, I can't even remember the name of the record, 
Rob did that uh, one album thing with one band. But um, anyway, John Five, 43 years old. He went on to uh, to write, you know, he's a songwriter. That's a, well, he plays, but he's also just just so talented. You know, a- Avril Lavigne, Meat Loaf, Scorpions, Ozzy, Slash, Skinnerd writes for everybody. And uh, when you have a talent for writing, most bands don't. <laughs> you got to go to the source. The source is John Five, and he's 43 years old. Happy birthday, John. Had I known, I would have had him on the show tonight. It uh, caught me by surprise right before showtime. But uh, great kid. Great kid. Full 43 years old. Uh, some things will never change. I think we'll always look at him uh, like that. Follow us on Twitter. Tonight is Open Lines. Follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio. I'll try to keep up with Twitter tonight. And uh, if you've got any questions, any subjects you want to talk about, you can tweet it in at J Church Radio, hashtag DM Radio Net. That's what you want to do. And uh, I'm, I'm, it's clicking by as I'm sitting here. Uh, David Palladius 411 will blow you away. You need to check it out. Oh, 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 I see what you're talking about with David. I talked to David. Uh, Ooh, probably a month ago, I think, about coming on the show, and we were excited about it, but then it was like two nights later, he was on Coast to Coast, and then it was like a week after that, he was on Coast to Coast again, or two weeks later, and, you know, we just don't do that over here. So, we, you know, I told him, as soon as you, let's put a few months in between, and uh, and then we'll bring you on over here. So that's what's up with David. Yeah, he's got some interesting stuff. And um, I was introduced to him through Steve Marillo and uh, Wolf McCarron. And uh, I think Wolf's going to call in tonight, too, as well. Uh, We were talking about him last night, his um, uh, Area 51 tapes that he has uh, got out there now in the net. So uh, I think he's going to try. He's got stuff to do tonight, but he might call in a bit later. All right, so follow us on Twitter, at Church Radio, hashtag DM Radio Net, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we are now moving forward. I guess we can make the announcement now. It's uh, formal. Uh, we will be podcasting with Libsyn. That is our partner. And we are moving forward with that. There you go. So we'll have all of the apps out there, iTunes, Apple, uh, um, Android, all of the apps will be available. We're working on that. It's going to take a couple of weeks for that, but there you go. The big announcement, Rob Walsh over there, the VP, uh, had a great conversation with him today. He's really excited. Jimmy, man, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do with you, uh, just like, uh, you know, Joe Rogan. It's going to be great. Well, you know, thank you, Rob. And, uh, and Rita worked on that uh, for, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a couple of months. But we formalized the agreement and partnership today. So I'm excited about that. And there you go. So access to downloads and getting stuff onto your phones and listening to things at your own convenience is now going to be available. I'm, I'm pretty fired up about that. I mean, it, YouTube is one thing. You know, it, it, it is totally one thing, but you're staring at a black screen and a video. It's just audio. I get that. But um, will we continue with YouTube? Probably. I mean, I guess the easier thing for everybody these days is uh, is podcasting in one form or another. So that's how we will be moving forward. And I hope everybody is happy about that. Now, of course, the best thing to do is just listen live every night. Come hang out. That's the best thing. Just come hang out. It's warm. It's fuzzy. It's cool. All right. Fade to black. Uh, yeah. With uh, with YouTube. Uh, I you know I guess we're going to continue with that and and everybody you know the the success of YouTube is there and I understand because I do the same thing. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't do anything like that with my phone. I don't personally. I don't have the time. So, but what I do is I do YouTube. I do YouTube every night. There's always something cool to watch and see and, and stuff. So that's where I get, you know, that's where I get my yayas out as, as I go to YouTube. So <clears throat> I understand the success of our channel on YouTube. I, I really do. Um, 
I think we're closing in on 5,000 subscribers. And considering we started with none uh, and we haven't solicited or done anything with it, we just put the stuff up there and let people enjoy it or not. And uh, it's done really well. So uh, we just figure uh, the, the request for podcasting, they come in all day long, every day, every single day. When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? And and I will say this, with technology, uh, with podcasting, our, pod, our show is different from everybody else. Not everybody, but, but most. Most podcasts are, you know, some are five minutes, some are a half hour, some are an hour, and they do it once a week, once a month. You know, that's, that's a bit different than what we do here as far as the labor that's involved also, the bandwidth also, the uh, upload times, you know, so if you're going to upload a podcast that you're doing once a week, well, that's that's a whole different ball game than worrying about a three hour show every night and removing commercials and doing edits and bringing it down or not uh, every single night. So you can get the podcast out right away on that day. That's that's all. That's a that's labor intensive stuff. And also it is huge hard drive space. And and now, and I was talking to Rob today, he goes, hey, now, uh, you know, what about your back catalog? What do you want to do with that? And I said, well, let's, uh, you know, let's put it all up there. I don't care. Let's do it. And he goes, okay, well, you know, you're going to upload it. <laughs> and I was thinking, wait a minute. That's 100 shows at three hours a whack. Oh, what? <laughs> That's going to take a month. Oh, geez. So, yeah, that's what we've got in front of us. But uh, um, we've uh, we've taken the step forward. We can't step back. So there you go. And I hope everybody is happy with that. All right. Open lines all night tonight. 323-825-5045. Got a lot of subjects we can throw on the table. Uh We'll break things up into segments. All that's cool. We'll, you know, we'll do the same thing that we did last week, and and uh, it uh, that I think that'll be the format. And you know, the show is done for you. And if uh, uh, if we need to modify the format, me, I am flying by the seat of my pants. Okay, so there you go. All right, email Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. You can also go over to JimmyChurchRadio.com, the website, and go over to the contact page and email through there everything goes through the producers so make it good and get it in here to me a lot of uh, a lot of things going on right now too and we'll get to that um also tonight i would like to hear from if uh they are listening uh the contest winners we've we've heard from a few but uh, this, uh, aside from next week, but this is, this is like one of the last times we'll be able to talk to you before we head out to contact in the desert next week. So anybody that has won contact in the desert tickets, I would like to hear from you tonight, too, as well. So would everybody else. How are you getting here? Where are you going to stay? What are you going to do? What seminars are you going to go see? Who are you going to chase down? Who are you going to stalk? Who do you want autographs from? Who are you going to take pictures with? All of this. I want to know. It's, a, it's going to be a great time. So all of the contest winners, please, if you are listening, give me a call tonight. I do want to hear from you. So does everybody else. We want to hear from you. 323-825-5045. Okay. Uh, let's see. A couple of emails. Let's see. We're up on the first break, but I, I'm going to read this email first, just in case if this person is actually listening email from Debbie. She says, I just listened to Solaris blue Ravens interview. Next time you talk to her, ask her what I think is a very important question, which is, does she think the astronomical increase in what we are being told is PTSD in returning vets is actually some kind of mind control super soldier technology? If so, is there a way to reach out to them via the super soldiers that we know uh, are there so that they can help overcome it like she has? And I thought that was an amazing email. So, Solaris, if you're listening right now, and I think you might be, but if you are, 
call in and answer that question directly for Debbie because I thought that was a, a pretty awesome question. And I don't know. I can call Solaris, but <laughs> that would defeat the purpose. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll call her during the break. But uh, Solaris, if you're out there, you're listening, answer that question. I think that is an amazing question. This is Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. Only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's call-in Thursday. This is your show. I'm going to take my first break, come back, and we'll start to set some subjects on the table. I'll be back right after this. Follow us on Twitter, at JChurchRadio, hashtag DM Radio Net. What's up, Fader Knots? I'll be back right after this. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Dark Matter Radio Network. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444 or go check out their website www.nattaxexperts.com that's n-a-t-t-a-x-e-x-p-e-r-t-s dot com tell them Jimmy sent you this is KJCR at jimmychurchradio.com on the Dark Matter Radio Network <laughs> Fade to black. <laughs> I'm just looking over at uh, Lynn Lewis. She says, <laughs> David Childress, uh, his voice hose through me like salt. Can't handle his drawl on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, turn down the sound and use close captioning for him. Oh, my goodness gracious. Where, do, where does where does Hatcher get the uh, where does David Hatcher Childers get the accent from? I thought he was uh, from the United States, isn't he? And I don't know of any state, I don't know anywhere where they have have that accent. But um, we would sit around uh, the first season of Ancient Aliens. I'm serious, man. When when he was on there, nobody knew. Uh, um, uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Killer German accent, by the way. Is that is that a German accent from Childress? No. No, is it? I don't think so. But anyway, we would just sit around and 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 practice our Childress. It, it was just a funny... I don't know where he gets it. I don't know. And, uh, and if I start running that in the ground... <laughs> uh, David Hatcher Childress. Millions of tons of blocks, I ask you. I ask, how how could they move million ton block huge blocks of snow? It must have been an extraterrestrial, a, a huge million ton blocks. All right, email from Roger. Why not date the stone structure of the Malibu base because it could either be an old temple like Gobekli Tepe. That would be an extraordinary, that would be extraordinary to say the least. We were talking about that. Thanks Roger for that. Uh, we were talking about that last night. Yeah, I know. 
I mean, it, it, it appears that if it was above, uh, uh, if it was above sea level 10,000 years ago, then that, that's a, that's a game changer. That is something that, Oh man, alive, oh, it, you know, in a weird, strange way, you know, let's just, uh, that, that, that's like the perfect scenario of everything. Um, man-made alien made. How about prehistoric 10,000 year old Gobekli Tepe temple made? Ooh, Lord, and get inside of that cave paintings carvings Ooh, yeah oh i'm all for that keep the guest request coming by the way um franklin rule guest request barry taff guest request linda moulton howell guest request von daniken remember that night that was a guest request think about that keep the guest request coming i get them every single day and as they come in here, I turn around immediately, pull open the, the little black book, and, and I contact. I contact them all. Everybody wants to come on the show. It's just always about uh, availability. But I reach out to everybody. Well, most everybody. So keep it coming. All right. Over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is why this is when when I say bespoke radio for the masses, this is a ex, uh, perfect example of that. Got an email from somebody in Switzerland. His name was uh, Switzerland from Scotland. His name is Christopher. And he sent me a collection of photos that he took in front of his house in Scotland. So go check it out. It's under Church Rant. Go over to JimmyChurchRadio.com right now. Scroll down Church Rant. It's there. And let me pull it up here in real time, too, as well. And then I'll tell you what you are looking at. Uh, let's see here. Bam, 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 bam. Man, I love the interbox. thing is just amazing. Okay, so scroll down. He sent me these pictures last week. And I asked him if it was okay. There's a one, two, three, four, five if it was okay to post them. Now, when you look at the thumbnails, because I'll tell you my reaction, because when he sent me the pictures, I'm looking at the thumbnails. I'm like, what am I looking at here? All right. What am I looking at? Looks like a chemtrail. And then we talk about it, exchange some emails. I want a clarification. And then my mind was blown. He said that what he was looking at were black beams being shot from the ground. And I'm like, huh? And then I open up the pictures. And I take a closer look. It's not a chemtrail. If you look, you can see the black beam starting from the top of the apartment building turns white, turns black, turns white. It's pulsed. That's what you're looking at there. And that is crazy. Now, I, again, this show is about talking and discovery. Now, and, and for people to present stuff, call in, uh, send in pictures, videos, and, and you know, freedom of, of uh, skepticism. Well, we got to be skeptic, but if you know what I mean. And I'm looking at this, and I don't know what to think, because I've never seen a chemtrail or any type of exhaust of an aircraft quite do quite this. And as the exhaust goes through different you know, atmospheres and temperature changes, then you get the vapors. But what you don't get is something like this coming from the ground. I don't know what it is. But the, the beam itself, and I think it's most clear, it's there in every picture. But in, uh, let's see, three is pretty cool. Four is mind-blowing. Go to four. And let me look. Yeah, five. Look at that. That is crazy. I think four, four is, is, is my favorite. I don't know what I, I don't know if that was in my neighborhood and that that's going on. 
you know. Uh, so anyway, so he sent me this email, and he says, uh, uh, "Let's see here. I know you must be busy, but if I may, if I may send you a sequence of pictures I took of a, an aerial phenomenon that has just got me completely stumped, taken last summer. They show, um, uh, they show." That barely flowed toward the horizon was bloody sun. And it's, uh, it's, all right. You know what? It's the other email. Turn my head around. Okay. So anyway, it was, <laughs> I got the wrong email up here from Christopher. It's the other one where he was talking about the uh, black beams and I don't know what to make of it. And I want everybody else to comment on this. I think uh, it's uh it's, it's strange. It looks like if if you follow the trajectory and you follow it back down, it looks like it's probably just from a mile away if you uh, kind of triangulate that. But I think that's a a fantastic set of pictures. So go check them out, jimmychurchradio.com. And uh, Christopher, who listens all the time over in Scotland, uh, Christopher, I got the pictures up now. Would love to hear from you if you want to call in. All right, got my Lynn Lewis coffee mug, too, by the way. I'm going to hit this real quick. Yeah, okay, we're going to hit the bottom of the hour. Subjects for the show tonight. We have got uh, a few things that I I want to get out uh, right away, but we have uh, Dr. Franklin Rule. We can talk about that. Barry Taff, another amazing show. Uh, Last night, Richard Dolan. And all of the subjects that we talk up, talked about this week, Franklin Rule, I got to tell you, um, and out of all of the guests that we have had on uh, this year, uh, Franklin solicited probably the most questions, the most email, the most follow-up email, uh, and it, it was it was amazing to me. And I was hoping for something like that, but uh, and a very important guy, very cool guy. And uh, right here in Southern California, too. So, Dr. Franklin Rule, great subject. Dr. Barry Taff, um, one of the things about Barry's show that uh, was okay during the show, but it's what Richard Dolan talked about last night. And that was fascinating about the stunning, good looking aliens. You know, and I just. That was just a weird thing to hear two nights in a row back to back. Um, And I got some email about that today, too, as well. So we can certainly talk about all of that. Richard Dolan, disclosure. Um, I I also thought one of the one of the cool things that Richard had brought up last night for him is that he is, you know, he's been changing and he's evolving. And he went from government disclosure the day after this disclosure and government secrets um, and that knowledge of UFO history, uh, which is an important one. And for him, um, it was something that interested him. So it was easy to uh, research and talk about. And he became that guy, that point guy. But now he's, he's into everything else as well. Abductions and uh, um, contactees, communication. Uh, it's, 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 it's interesting to hear him talk about how he is evolving as a researcher. So we can talk about that too, as well. Now, also there was, um, and I'm going to talk about this first after the break, there was something that was going around in the net. <clears throat> Richard and I were talking about this last night and then boom, it happened. It happened, uh, yesterday and, and is, is going around today and it's about, Russian UFO disclosure. Now, we've been hearing about this for a while. But uh, so these articles popped up today. So I go and and uh, and I'll talk about in depth about it after the break. But I went and checked it out and it just turned out to be a cut and paste job that has been floating around on the Web forever. What do I mean by that? It's fascinating. And you need to really be careful about what's going on out there on the web. When you read something like this, just like Dolan said, man, go do a Google search and date it. <laughs> Cut, get the headline, get a name, Google search and date it. 
and and just be prepared for what you're about to to see. If you're going to take it a step further and you're going to go there, you better be ready. And I did that today. And I'll talk about that when I come back after the break. All right. That's the first subject. The second subject, the Shining Code 2.0. I did that this week. And I'll tell you about what I found. Oh, and then we've got this Ebola thing coming to the United States. How do you feel about that? Gaza ceasefire. MH17 silence. This is Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. I'll be back right after this. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark matter. You're listening to Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is a revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. used to do a seminar uh, for, this is Fade to Black, Spoke Radio for the Masses, uh, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This song right here uh, by Doug Aldrich. I used to do a seminar for releases, and uh, I did it uh, uh, on mixing and, 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 uh, and recording. And I used that song as, uh, I would mix that song live in front of, uh, uh, seminar, uh, what, do you, what would you call it? Seminar audience. I, I don't know what you would call it, but, uh, all over, all over the United States, Canada. And, uh, I did it for about, oh man, probably two years. And I would take the, I had the raw tracks of this song and I would mix it in front of an audience and show them how to get it done. And, uh, yeah. Wow. And it's uh, just a really cool tune. It was uh, something easy to mix, and it made me look really good because the music was really good. So I, I looked like I knew what I was doing. It was uh, pretty funny. Anyway, all right. Uh, this uh, Russian UFO disclosure. Check this out. I get, uh, I, get, uh, uh, I get the link sent to me. Jimmy, check this out. Check this out. The Russians, they're going to disclose. And... And I, it takes me over to that famous website, Before It's News, who uh, I think Before It's News actually did the first story on the Malibu base. <laughs> oh, oh, look who's calling. Ken Lipson's calling. Should I grab it now? Should I grab Ken now? All right. Let's just do it. Uh, we're going to get both Kens in here tonight, uh, I think. Let's just uh, let's go straight to Ken. Ken, how are you, sir? Mr. Church, it is an honor to speak to you. No, the honor is all mine. I'm telling you right now, Jimmy, uh, I've been looking for a long time. Like, I listen to Red Ice, and, like, I I did all the other shows. There is no one who is as close to Art Bell as you. (laughs) There's, like, 300 miles in between us, man. He's in Vegas. Oh, I see. (laughs) You got the creepy voice, too, and everything like that. It's, It's awesome. You know, it's funny, Ken. I'm serious. I know I've said this before on the air, but um, this voice and and ask anybody that knows me, ask Rita uh, or anybody else out there that knows me. This voice is is it's it's a bane. OK, <laughs> I've, I've had this since I was a kid. I was five years old. And and my dad would introduce me to his friends, you know, with, you know, and this is uh, this is my son, Mike, and this is my son, Danny. Hi. Hi. This is my son, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, what's up? 
Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up there, little man? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What's up? You know, I, I, I had, I, 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 it was, it's, it's just hilarious. I've, it's, it's just, just always been there. And, and I don't know, you know, and when we're sitting around at dinner, I, 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 I hate it because as soon as I start talking, everybody else shuts up because I'm the loudest guy there. <laughs> Not that I'm saying anything interesting. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, Hey, you know, and it's, I can't, it's, it's, in a weird way, it kind of sucks. But you know what? For this show, I guess it's perfect. So there you go, right? Exactly. For the subject matter, Art Bell had it. That voice, when you hear it late at night, it would just get into your spine, and it would send like creepy energy all over yourself. I was telling someone the other day that I used to have to listen to the whole Art Bell show because I used to get so scared that I couldn't fall asleep. So, mm-hmm. And you got the same thing. Well, you know what? I was the opposite with Art back in the day. I would fall asleep to Art. And I would have the most tripped out dreams known to man, you know, callers calling in, you know, and, 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 you know, these, these callers calling in when you're sleeping, talking about uh, whatever it is, witchcraft, ghost, uh, abductions, uh, or, you know, whatever it is, but, but that is, you know, radio waved into your head as you're sleeping and I mean, wow. And I got addicted to it. And I really could not go to sleep without art. And then, you're, <laughs> and this is funny, Ken. Um, and I know you probably have a question or two, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, with art, when he left, each time that he left the air, I think all of us uh, went into a little bit of depression, you know, because mm-hmm. it, was a, it was a thing that we did Monday through Thursday. Art Bell, or and it was so great when he was on the weekends because then you had him on the weekends and you could stay up late listening to him when you had the weekend off and there was all of that. But when he would leave, I didn't have anything to do at night. And I, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm speaking for everybody that's listening to me right now. They know exactly what you and I are talking about right now. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, when he came back on the air on Sirius and I caught his first show with Michio. And I'm I'm in bed uh, with my uh, um, i i iPad iPod iPad the, the one with the screen that's an iPad right iPod right. is the MP3 player right all right I'm not yep. iPhone okay so anyway and 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 Art busted out and I'm like the voice ah Art oh my life is complete again oh man. <laughs> Just talk to me, man. Just, just don't, I don't even care what he's saying. Just, just don't stop. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I'm so with you, man. I'm so with you. And he had that effect on everybody. And, um, I, I did see, uh, there's a, a really cool interview. If you ever want to catch it on YouTube, it's him on CNN with, uh, uh, that British guy. I, I can't remember his name. He's not on CNN anymore. They, they fired him couple of months ago. The Pierce Morgan yeah, guy? Yeah, Pierce Morgan. So there's an interview with him and Pierce. And, and so go check that out. But just listen to Art's voice, you know, and, and then compared to the, uh, the tenor of, of Pierce Morgan, that irritating thing that he's got going on. <laughs> and then Art's coming in with, well, you know, I started in radio back and I was like, wow. <laughs> Friggin' Art Bell, man. That's fantastic. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a really good interview. So um, so what's okay. shaking, man? What do you got? So the question I had, I've been thinking about this all day. I'm just going to – I've never called into one of these shows before. So um, I just want to keep this simple. And they were t- you were talking about it a little bit. But um, as far as the Ken Trails go, I've always, like, kind of wondered about it a little bit. But um, one thing I thought of – like, I saw the documentary where they said that the guy held out the glass of water. And there was barium in it when the when the plane flew overhead. Right, I saw that and too. You, yes, yes. Yeah, and I, if you ever read, now I, I told I forgot who I told. I think it was Lou, but Zachariah Sitchin is my dog. I love that dude. I love everything about him. I read all his books except for two. And what he said was that the Anunnaki, when they um when they came here, the whole project, all the things they were doing all over the place, was to harvest gold. And what they do, they were they were spraying it into into their atmosphere on Nibiru because there was a problem with their atmosphere. <clears throat> Excuse me, their atmosphere. Right. So I was wondering if maybe it's something like that. I want to know what you thought. Well, that's you know I saw and the answer. Well, you know I think there's actually different applications for it. I don't think there's specifically one, 
but uh, in that it could be to uh, control the weather in some ways. It could be uh, global warming, uh, cooling as well. It, 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 you know, there's those direct applications. But then there's uh, the other aspect of affecting us as uh, humans. I mean, is there something that they're spraying that, that is, is falling down to affect us? Um, and it could be a, a, a bunch of different things. Maybe it's uh, population control. That, that's one thought. Maybe uh, they're marking us with some kind of tracking device or some type of chemical that they could follow the ebb and flow of, of communities and stuff. There's, there's that. Um, but I will say this. There is a, a set of videos that I did see. Now, um, when it comes to this type of conspiracy stuff and you, you jump on the web and jump on YouTube and you start looking at it, you can really get sucked in. I'm not suggesting mm. to do that. But, and, and it hasn't happened to me. I, I always put my foot down. Before I go too dark, I'll back off because it, it, it's uh, mind-altering and mind-numbing. But I did see a set of videos where these, uh, these planes were literally crisscrossing back and forth over uh, this community in a line and obviously spraying in a pattern. I mean, in, in, in this video, which is about an hour long, these planes take about 30 passes back and forth, and you mm -hmm. can see it turning on and off. You could see it turning off at the end of each run. They're videotaping the planes making a U-turn and coming back over the same path and then going back in the opposite direction and laying this down. And, and by the time this video is done, it's like the sky is covered above them. It's crazy. Now, mm. that, that, that is chemtrail action. You know, that's not a plane taking off, and that's not, you know, uh, some type of exhaust. That's not an accident. That is n no, no, no. And we, when you see something like that, then you have to wonder, what is the purpose of that? I have, mm -hmm. you know, I have no idea. My, my, uh, my uh, original thoughts, and I still kind of lean this way, is this. Um, if you can control the weather over another country, um, you've got the edge up on somebody. And, and yep. for, for a lot of different reasons. Also, if uh, you can change, because look, well, look what they do over Dubai all the time. And uh, they're, they're spraying chemicals up there all the time to cause rain. Now, you know, I had read the other day, I read an amazing fact about the amount of rainfall that they have in Dubai now. I mean, it's like, it's like temperate now. <laughs> it's like the place to be because they're spraying all the time over there. Well, okay, over the United States, like right now here in California, we're in the middle of a drought here in Los Angeles. We're, again, we're in the middle of a drought. Uh, they passed all these, these ordinances this week about uh, water control. So why not uh, spray something up there to get some rainfall here in Southern California? Um, I don't have anything against it if it doesn't harm us, but that's certainly an aspect of it. And if we saw it going down today, uh, would we be alarmed and... And why wouldn't they announce it on, on the news? Okay, we're going to be spraying for rain. We're going to spray for mm -hmm. rain. Don't be alarmed. It's Everything's okay. And then we got to believe the man, of course, at that point. But, <laughs> but, no, but you, you know what I mean? So Yeah, and it's funny you say that because Art had that one show that he swore he'd never do again where he said he wanted everyone to concentrate on, on having it rain in a certain part of America. And what happened was, like, at two weeks later, there was this huge drought. And he said, I'm not messing with that stuff again. Because if you take it from one place, I think, you know, you're going to – and put it in another place, you're going to cause problems in that place you're taking it from. So that, that's interesting that you said that. Yeah, there's an ebb and flow to – you know, there's only so much water up there. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, but you, there, there are places – Seattle doesn't need any rain. Okay, so we can <laughs> – uh, that, that's okay. San Francisco – you know, uh, Portland, I, I, you know, give us a couple of extra inches a year down here in, in Southern California. Renee from Tucson sent me an email uh, last week, and I'll, I'll just reference this really quick. I didn't mention it on the air before, but, um, it, well, that wasn't the intention of the email. What, but what she said was, Jimmy, I was talking about the, my lawn, right, having to take care of my lawn. 
And uh, she said, look, you live in the desert. You know, you guys get the same amount of rainfall that we do right here in Arizona, where it is a desert out here. And so we have to remind ourselves here in, in Southern California all the time. We're trying to grow grass and, and sprinkler systems on our lawns and trying to keep stuff growing. But we forget Los Angeles is the desert. We just made it green. We bought we brought water here with uh, Mulholland and, and uh, the, you know, the, the bringing in the water from the mountains and the snow, uh, the snowfall. So, yeah, we're, we're a desert here, and we're fighting against it. Maybe we should just give up. I should pull my lawn out and just put gravel down like they do in Scottsdale. <laughs> you know what I'll I mean? I'll do that with my lawn. I'm tired of mowing. I live in New England. We, we get all that crap all the seasons. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, I'm tired of mowing. I want to put sand down. <laughs> yes, sand or just artificial turf, you know. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. I wonder what my neighbors would say if I threw artificial <laughs> turf down. So, all right, Rick. Anything else, my brother? Um, no, it was an honor talking to you, and thank you so much. Jimmy. I Keep just said, I just said, Rick. Ken, I'm sorry about that. And I'm I sorry. and I said it earlier. I want both. I want both Kens tonight. So we got one out of the way, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get back in here next. Uh, all right, man. All right. Hey, thanks, Ken. Hey, listen. You have a good weekend. You too. I'll talk to you. Bye bye. All right, Ken Lipson. Okay, so we got one of the Kens out of the way. How's that? Okay, Beck, you're next. Beck is on point, and uh, there you go. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, chemtrails, man. Um, I had posted um, how Wolf McCarran is called. This is this is my cell phone. Hey, Wolf, watch this. I'm going to do this live on the air. Hey, Wolf. You're live on the air, but you're calling on my cell phone, man. You need to call in on the call-in line. The number is, watch this. This is not real time. I'm talking live on the air right now into the microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 323-825-5045. All right, Wolf. Okay, bye. Wolf McCarran. Now, there's intelligence personified. Did I just say that live on the air? <laughs> Wolf McCarran. Oh, uh, my live dude, you're on my cell phone. Oh, you gotta love that. So um yeah, chemtrails. I, I don't know. I, I really don't. I posted a picture of the interior of a of a of a Boeing with these huge tanks in it. And then I had a couple of pilots uh, email me saying that that was ballast control for test flights. And I was like, what? Ballast control? Here's Wolf. Let's, let's, let's grab this. Wolf McCarran. Hey, how you doing? Hi, no, how are you doing? That's the thing. I'm, I'm doing really good. I love live radio. Listen to you, Jimmy. Yeah, thank you, Wolf. Thank you, Wolf. You're a bit of a celebrity these days. Now that everybody knows that you were one of the dark, crazy guys, uh, you know, you, you know what the thing is, Wolf. And 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 I, and I want you to tell everybody where to go. Look at your videos here in a second. But let me let me just say this for everybody out there that that may or may not know you. But but Wolf is one of the original guys, one of the original. Uh, there was a handful of Area 51 guys back in the early 90s, just a handful. Norio, Bob Lazar, uh, Knapp, uh, Glenn, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody else. Oh, SDM. Glenn, yeah, Glenn was actually after me. He can use a, I consider him second generation. We, oh, exactly. Well, see, after, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. You're yeah. one of the OG guys, and I've always said that right. about you. But you were also with that. You never, you didn't take it to the next level of trying to be, you know, a celeb. You know, you right. you didn't do that. You went the other direction, no. and you did serious research, and you went out there and did your own thing, played cat and mouse with the security forces. Which I was talking, uh, Richard Dolan and I last night were talking about you. And your original set of videos, by the way. And uh, mm -hmm. and Richard said, you know, what Wolf uh, did back then, you couldn't do now post 9-11. I mean, that's it. He would have no. got shot, you know. But oh, but yeah. but uh, back then, it was still uh, an innocent world, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 
Uh, so Wolf uh, went out with his video camera. He's an editor. Uh, he's in the film business out here in California now, and he's always done that. Uh, he's always been a video guy uh, here in L.A. But you went out there very early on and and got up on Freedom Ridge um, and and hung out with everybody and uh, and videotaped. And you uh, and there's not that many videos out there. But you, this is the thing, and now I'm, I'm going to let you talk in just a second. What you did was uh, you sat on all of this video, you know, and now you've, uh, you've made it available. You're starting, because you have tons of it, you're starting to make it available to everybody. So tell us what you got and where can everybody see it. Well, uh, every, well everybody can see it on YouTube now. It's a YouTube channel I have called Area 51 TV. And you can go to youtube.com forward slash users or user is it users uh, uh, forward slash area 51 TV. And uh, you can just Google uh, or you can just go to YouTube and type in area 51 TV and it'll pop up with my uh, little logo there. Uh, yeah, the footage I have posted is all watermarked. It's all B roll. I was the guy back in the day that the Learning Channel and Discovery and History Channel and all these shows would call to get, you know, when they were doing documentaries, uh, you know, uh, of area 51, they, they would all call me to. To get footage, I used to go out there, you know, back in the day when there was only, you know, super VHS cameras at the time. This is before digital and HD and all this stuff, of course. Right. And uh, I used to, you know, have to run along the ridges and hide my cameras and backpacks and stuff like that. And but back then, it was a lot cheaper for them to buy footage off me than to send some guy out there. And the guy out there doesn't know where the hell he's going. Or or, or other news crews would hire me to take them out there to be like their Indian guide, you know, to, to get them on the peaks and stuff like that and uh, stuff like that. So I have on my YouTube site, I, or my YouTube page, I have all my videos posted pretty much. Uh, and uh, I have them all watermarked. So it's got says Wolf Digital Media in the, in the middle. Because we, have, as you know, Jimmy, we know that people can't steal stuff from YouTube. Right. And I don't want people stealing my footage and putting in their documentaries and not paying for it. Right. So I, I, have, I have up on there all interested parties. If they want to contact me and want my footage unwatermarked, they can contact me and then we can talk about price and whatnot and then uh, do it that way. So it's a lot easier for me to sell my footage out there. A lot of, a lot of document, uh, documentary people look for stuff on YouTube now anyways. Right. And then they call somebody and try to buy the rights and whatnot. So at least I have this stuff up there. It's all watermarked, but I do have non-watermarked versions of it. But it's basically all the B-roll, as we call it in the industry, of uh, just static shots of the base or guards, but I have more footage than anybody who's probably ever shot out there. And I actually even have, if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen my security guard uh, yeah. uh, footage. Yeah, I, yeah, I watched have, that uh, play by play. Yeah, I watched that. Play the, by I'm play. telling you, I can't believe <laughs> yeah. that is some of the best video ever. And oh, yeah. uh, of of Wolf right there with the uh, with the white jeeps, man. It's uh, that's that's nutty yeah, stuff. We, Hey, yeah, hey, I mean, hey, we're, we're, we're recording the dogs. Are you going to take a break or what? Uh, well, actually, well, there was uh, uh, two calls that came in back to back. And uh, okay. I was going to say, well, the thing is, I know that you're going out tonight and you're doing your thing. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's Wolfy in Hollywood. And <laughs> 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 but um, what I would like to do, if that's OK, um, yeah. is uh, well, well, let's get you on uh, next week or the week after, uh, maybe after okay. contact in the desert. And uh, sure. we'll we'll play some of your video. We'll put some of the video okay. up on uh, Jimmy Church Radio, and sure. uh, and then we'll sit down and talk about it. You know, drink some pizza Excellent, and beer yeah. here in the studio, and and uh, yeah. do, do it right. So, I, great, I, buddy. hey Wolf, all the best. Oh, I want to say this. There's one thing, and and the mm-hmm. callers that just hung up, just just uh, call right back uh, as soon as I tell you it's open lines. Oh, there it is. They're here. Okay, Wolf, listen. Okay. Um, I'll let you go, okay. and I'll talk to you over the okay, weekend. Okay, buddy. All right, take care, buddy. Wolf McCarran. Thank you, Wolf. Okay, see ya. Bye. Yeah, Wolf is one. He's the OG. Wolf is the guy. And uh, it, I, I can't say any more than that. But uh, let's just uh, jump to the uh, next caller. This is uh, Call In Thursday. Fade to black. You're with Jimmy Church. Oh, they hung up. All right. Well, okay. Call right back. You were online. You were here. You were with us. Wolf was one of the OG guys. And this is the funny thing. I've known Wolf uh, for 
probably 25, 30 years. Uh, nah, 25. Uh, probably pushing 30, though. Uh, 88. I think I met him 87. So, yeah, we're, we're hitting 30. But I always knew him as another guy, a drummer. Good drummer, too. And one day, it was probably about 10 years ago, uh, he pulls out a device. Oh, I can't even really say. I don't want to get him in any trouble. But uh, he pulls out something. And, and I look at him like, what? where did you get this? And he's like, Area 51, man. What? And we sat and we talked for the next week <laughs> about uh, ufology. And, uh, and I was just blown away. And I had known him. Be, I met him before Area 51. I met him before. And I did not know that about that whole part of his life. It's, it's incredible. He is absolutely one of the OGs. All right. Phone lines are open. I'll quit yapping. I will uh, pick up the next call. Sorry that I talked through phone calls. You got to let it, let it ring. Let it ring. And if I pick it up, let, let me lay down some rules here. If I pick up, okay, here's the call. So just listen. When I pick up, like now, I've just picked up the call. But if you can't hear me, you're you're in a hold. You're in a hold. And then I bring you online like I'm going to do right now and say, hey, you're live with Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Hey, it's Carlos. Carlos, how are you, sir? Where are you calling from? Uh, Texas. Carlos, Texas. Tejas. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How about you? It's a, it's a beautiful night, man. And, and I love... I love Thursday nights, calling in, talking to everybody. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I get all geeked up for it. And, it, you know, the show's about you guys. It, it, it's, it's the night that it's not about me. You know what I mean? And uh, hey. so, uh, Carlos, quick question. What do you got? Well, I have a friend that, uh, um, you know, from the military days. And um, right now he, uh, he lives in Arizona. And uh, it happened that he, uh, he deals with... Uh, I guess he lives in the desert, and he uh, ended up, I guess, bumping into a little area where he found um, a bunch of tablets, pieces of, uh, you can say runes, but the, the weird thing about them, he tells me that they are they pick like like aliens, you know, like like Indians, uh, uh, what do you call it, American? I would say, I'm not sure if it's American Indians or... Uh, I don't know the native. Like uh, petroglyphs, and, like petroglyphs. Yeah, and uh, the, the shows like Indians and in, uh, the uh, uh, when the ships are hovering, hovering over, over like uh, you can see uh, buildings. Well, not buildings, but it looks looks like uh, uh, the pyramids. Oh, really? Do you have and do you have pictures? He sent me a couple of he sent me a couple of pictures and I asked him if they're real. He said, "Dude, those are real that you find." You've got you to know. send send them to me, Carlos, and uh, just send them to uh, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio dot com, and uh, and send me your contact info, and we'll get it up on the website. I'd love to see it and talk about it. Yeah, no problem. Um, I tell you what, uh, if I have a what was that the the email again? Uh, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Jimmy. At JimmyChurchRadio.com. It's right there on the website. And, uh, yeah, Jim, oh, okay. yeah, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Send them in and send me your contact info, and uh, we'll, we'll get you back on the show. I'd love to see them. So would everybody else. Not a problem. Thank you, Carlos. You have a good night. Uh, you too. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with uh, Jimmy Church, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Renee, riding out monsoon season. Hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you haven't lived till you've seen a 40-foot-tall palm tree in the pouring rain, completely engulfed in flames from being hit by lightning. It's quite <laughs> a sight. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I got your pictures today, by the way. And, and, and Renee sent in some pictures of, uh, a, a hab- how do you say it? Haboob? Haboob? Haboob. Haboob. And, I and I, I went through, I will say this, those pictures, um, as scary as they are, 
they are nothing like being there for real. I mean, yeah. seriously, nobody, unless you've been through that in Arizona, yeah. you have no idea that that goes down in the United States. And I definitely saw my life flash. In oh, a I, summers ago on the way back from Phoenix to Tucson. I, I, <laughs> Never I, again. I, I was, uh, I had, uh, uh, okay. I have a friend uh, that lives in Phoenix. His name is Billy Siegel. And uh, we worked with uh, the Jim Blossoms together. And Billy, he now works for Fender. But anyway, I'm driving from Tucson to Phoenix. And it's about 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening. And as you know, that's a, you know, it's a one-hour drive. It depends on how you drive mm-hmm. it. you know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it, it, it's a one-hour drive. And, and I've never experienced that before. And I'm, I'm tooling up the 10 freeway heading north. The 10 goes east-west across the United States. But that section is like the only mm-hmm. spot in the United States where the right. 10 actually runs north-south. And uh, so anyway, I'm heading north up, up to Phoenix. And I see it off in the distance, this orange wall. And I'm like, what is – and it's not – it is It is right out of a, a movie. You know, it's the biggest – Special it's effects nightmare. Movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and it's coming on me, and I drive straight into it. Now, instantly, <laughs> I can't see. Yeah. You know, there's dust on the windshield. I got the windshield wipers going. It's red clay dust, <laughs> and 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 I can't see. I'm driving literally two miles an hour on the freeway. I can't see a, not even a foot in front of the car. You can't see headlight. You can't see anything. Yeah. And and I'm driving through it, and I'm panicking, and I get on my cell phone, and I call Billy. While and, you're driving through yeah, yeah. and, and I'm like, getting on your cell phone. And I'm panicking. <laughs> Billy, Billy, oh, my God, man, send, send, send help. I'm not going to make it through. So, <laughs> but um, And I drove through that, and I get to Phoenix, and, and I get to Billy's house. He goes, dude, come on, man. It happens all the time. It just blows through. Dude, no, you don't understand. It was crazy. No, man, it's a haboob. It happens every day. You know, and it was like, wow. But, yeah, absolutely, that is the craziest thing. And I don't know how you guys deal with it, but um, I, 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 was, I wanted to tell everybody in Phoenix about it. It was a waste of breath. You know, it was like, <laughs> dude, come on, man. Oh, jeez, you well, rookie. Hey, thanks. thanks for letting us talk you into this uh, additional night and i'd like to remind everyone that we the audience have to participate and call in for this to continue every week okay? <laughs> yeah it's your show it's, it's all about you you know it's <laughs> your show call in phobia scare you away we're all friends here and, and very forgiving yeah 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 you know and, and and you know it's it's funny i get uh i get these emails and and stuff where they go man you know i'm just scared man you make me nervous i'm like me Oh no, no, come on. Right now as we speak. Yeah, 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 come on. It's all good. Okay, so Have one of the shot and pick up the damn phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And so but you sent me uh you sent me an email today about uh uh Ebola. And yes. I and I did want to talk about it. What what are your thoughts really quick? Well, like I said to you, what were they thinking? I understand it's an American. I understand they have every imaginable safety precaution in place, but it scares me that anyone, even an American healthcare worker who has been sickened by Ebola, to have them fly back from there to Atlanta. Right. Who knows what can possibly go wrong along the way? I mean, you you say you don't leave anyone behind, but... Aren't they saying there is no cure? You can only do palliative care anyway. So why can't they get the care they need somewhere? Right. And near there, when there are plenty of other American medical personnel already around. It's a it's a tough decision to make. In that, when when you have something like this, it's a tough decision when you have to quarantine somebody. It's a tough decision. And if it was a family member of mine that was over there and this was going on, of course, I of want course the best care. Want them back. Yeah, yeah. But you have to think of a, it's a tough call. Quarantining anybody is a tough call. And with something like this, now, uh, okay, okay, so I have to say, uh, let's send the care over there. Let's send the best care that we can do over there. There's not, not a whole lot that we can do, but we do have to contain. Because if this does get out of control, 
then then what do we do? You know, right, and, that's what I didn't understand. Why not send the care there? Look, this is the thing. This is this is this is where uh, every conspiracy thought just goes mm-hmm. right. I say it all the time. Goes right on the table, and it is this. It's called fear. You know, yeah. so that you know, if anything happens, suddenly we've got a major, major, major panic attack here in the United States and fear and, 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 and that makes money that it, it, it makes money for somebody scare, scare the population. That's what you do. You scare them. You know, I, you remember, I hear something very simple. Do you remember when Firestone tires were blowing up on SUVs? Oh, yes. You know, after all my years uh, in the auto industry, of course, uh, ex- I lived through that. Exactly. I had a Ford Explorer, Firestone oh. all-terrain tires. The week that I bought, the week that I bought that car, the, the, uh, uh, it was brand new. I, uh, one of the Firestones blew out in the back of the car and uh, uh, on the SUV. Well, anyway, so I went through that. But, but what did it do? everybody bought new tires. Everybody got, you know, everybody, you know, this fear of, oh man, I've got fire stones, you know? My friends, my (laughs) friends, my, I should say business acquaintances at the time, since I'm out of that industry now, um, managers at various fire stones, not in Tucson, this was in another area years ago. um, One of them actually showed me a memo and several others told me about it, that they received from their regional corporate headquarters, um, describing the whole thing as a selling opportunity. Absolutely. And, you know, and now here, this, this I, you can see this playing out. You can just see, you can feel it happening. And and look at, you know, remember, again, anthrax, the, the anthrax letters. And and it's, it's it, they don't know where it's coming from. It's leaking out of a laboratory. It's this, it's, it's every, you know, throw that fear. Just throw it out there. And here we Ebola is freaking everybody out as it is for the last, you know, 10, 20 years over in Africa. But it was contained and it was over there. And we have an ocean between us. And and, you know, we know what causes Ebola. We know we we just can't cure it. And what it does to you is the most frightening thing of all. And let's not we don't need to paint that picture right now, but. But now to have it intentionally brought over here, I'm sorry. I'm looking at, here's a tweet that just came in from uh, Subversive. And uh, he says, you own up, get real, and quarantine them. You know? Yeah. And that's it. That's, I hate to say it, but look, look at the, you know, all the plagues that we've had over, over the centuries. And, and the, as, as sad and, and you, know, you do that with a tuberculosis pa- patient. You know, oh, yeah. you quarantine them. It's just, it's what we have to do. And that's it. I hate to even talk like that. But, and if it was a family member, it's a tough decision. But, mm-hmm. you know, if it was me, I'd say, hey, man, just keep me over here. There's no reason for me to go to the States. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Yeah. You know, but, but, but that's it. And, I, yeah, I can see it happening. I can see the whole thing playing out right now. How would you like to be the pilot of that plane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, the, 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 the ground crew, any, anything, you know, just, it's a, it's a freaky situation. And, uh, I don't know. And, and that plane, what are we going to do with the plane after it gets here? Are we going to take it out to the desert and burn it? You know, what, you know, I, it's, it's crazy. So many ramifications. Yeah. Yeah. I can well, see the well, whole thing playing out. Speaking of scary stuff, by the way, you're welcome for all that chemtrails info I sent you way back when. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yep. Freeman said, uh, anyone who doubts it, come to Tucson and see for yourself. My congressmen and senators haven't answered a single one of multiple emails. I've been sending all of them for six months, which included those same video links I sent you. Well, uh, you know, you're you're letting my secret out, Renee. You're not supposed to tell everybody where I get all the cool <laughs> stuff for this show. Well, you know, you were that's a little between more skeptical <laughs> back then. <laughs> this is all of this is between you and I, Renee, and now everybody knows. Oh, it's Renee well, in Tucson we, that makes Jimmy said, look so smart. 
what was that you said last night to uh, we tuned in to be educated? <laughs> Ed, edu- <laughs> we can, we can to favor every once in a while. <laughs> educated, educated, yeah. But R- Renee, uh, I uh, I'll just tell everybody. I don't know how you find the time, but Renee does a lot of research and she's connected uh, uh, through all kinds of networks across the country. A lot of the shows that we have done, I'm going to give you props right now, have come directly from Renee. Um, she has hooked me up with a numerous amount of people. Um, she, Han, and, and Costas come, come to mind immediately, aside from other uh, subject matters. But uh, Renee, every single day, I get my Renee email, and uh, she points me in different directions, and, uh, and we all thank you, Renee. Thank you. Well, glad to, uh, to contribute. And you also helped me make a new friend recently. Your, your regular, uh, your frequent flyer tweeter, Allison Bell, I came across her name on uh, Costa Macrius' website, and I said, oh, my gosh, it's got to be the same woman. And we've been in nonstop <laughs> communication for like three days now. It's great. Uh, oh, so thank you for that. No, thank so you. I, thank you, Renee. Do we have two more minutes? Uh, I've actually got a, a call coming okay. in right now, and I, Renee, you of all people. But you know what? We talk all day long anyway. But <laughs> so there you go. Thanks, Thank Renee. You. You're all the all the best. All the best, Renee. Have a safe weekend. Thank I'll you. talk to you over the weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was Renee in Tucson, and the calls uh, keep coming in. Let's just go to the next one. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. This is Alex Mistretta. Alex, Alex in the house. Hey, is it now check this out, Alex. I was in a debate with uh, Steve Murillo uh, yeah. about a month ago on how to say your last name right now. Now, before you, you correct me, he goes, Jimmy, it's Mistreta, Mistreta, like an A, not an E. Don't say Mistreta. It's Mistreta. I said, Steve, no, no, it's, it's Mr. No. So now you just said Mistretta. Now correct everybody right now. Oh, I lost I lost Alex. Alex, call call right back. And I think it's Alex. <laughs> I've always called him Mistretta. When he's been on this show, it's so funny. Called him Mistretta. All right. Fade to black. We'll wait for Alex to call back. Thank you, Renee. And uh, yeah, yeah, Renee. Seriously, oh, here's Alex. Renee is is like a, a co-producer on the show. Alex, are you going to stay with us this, this this time? Yes, Alex. Sorry, uh, we were cut off for I don't know what happened. Okay, is it Mistreta or Mistretta? It's Mistretta. Sorry, Steve. One of my best <laughs> friends in the world. I know, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. I've gone, you know, on investigations with Steve. We've been to skin walking together, but. He's got that one. Well, I'll get to Mr. Adam. Yeah, you know, I can't wait uh, to talk to him tomorrow. I'm going to go, dude, I, you know, Alex was on the show last night, and and he threw you under the bus. Well, did I do it first? Yeah, I did it first, but you just confirmed. So, um, Everyone gets it wrong. So we had, uh, we had your good friend on last night, or the night before, Barry Taff. Yeah, yeah, I talked to him a couple of hours before the show, in fact. Oh, okay, yeah, because uh, we talked about you on the show, too, briefly. But um, Barry, Barry is an amazing guy. I mean, I, yeah, not a, I, I well, okay. Uh, one of us needs to uh, talk about Barry first, and and you're calling into the show. But Barry is uh, we, and I knew, I knew leading up to the show. The thing is with Barry is there are so many things to talk about with Barry, and if you just pick one subject, you're good for two hours, just one. And, but with Barry, I wanted to talk about like 10 different things. And there's just not that, there's not that much time because you want to get in depth. You want to get in depth. You want to peel back the layers with Barry. And I got to tell you, after the show the other night and the show ended, I'm thinking that was, you know, some of the best two hours I've ever done, two and a half hours. It was great. But there was, literally 20 things still left on the table that we just didn't get to with Barry. Alex, do we, yeah, I'm, right here, yeah. I, I, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. just, I just think he's a fascinating guy. Yeah. I mean, I've investigated tons of cases, Barry. I've known him for about 10 years now. And, um, I mean, I talked to him two, three times a week and I, I could, I could listen to him for hours. You know, he's, 
he's the most knowledgeable individual in the parapsychology field that I've ever met. He brought and up this case is fascinating. He, exactly. Yeah, he, go ahead. he brought up one thing, um, which was uh, uh, he brought up uh, you know the good looking, uh, the good looking aliens, the good looking contacty, the good looking. Uh, you know, and he kept making reference to this. And then Richard Dolan comes on last night, not knowing what Barry was talking about the night before. And and Richard last night told us uh, a couple of stories, maybe even more uh, more than that, about these remarkably good looking alien contactees. And uh, yeah. or uh, 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 that that and I just thought, what? I don't know what's going on, but in the last month, this reference I have I have seen and heard things over the years, but it's like it's come up repeatedly over the last month. And in all of your research, do you have you been finding the same thing? You know, I'm not talking about reptilians or greys. We're talking about and the Nordic reference, okay, but we're talking about insanely good looking perfection. You know, in your research, have you run into that? Oh, absolutely. I've heard those stories all the time. It's, you know, I think in some sense, they sort of like make you see what you want to see, what you're more receptive to seeing at that particular time for whatever their agenda is. Right. And, you know, for a lot of people, obviously, it's a lot easier to take than, you know, the reptilian book. Right, right, and I, right. I must have a good-looking alien myself, you know. But, yeah, definitely. And those, I mean, from anywhere from, you hear the stories even in the middle of nowhere, in zone of silence in Mexico. In the middle of the Mexican desert, people are driving, and you see really good-looking people walk inside of the road, and they disappear. Exactly. It's, yeah, that, and that's what know? Richard was talking about last night, too, yeah. as well. And yeah. I, I find that aspect fascinating. And if anybody's listening right now, hey, Alex, I've got a couple more calls uh, uh, backed up against you. What have you, uh, what have you got going on? Who's next up at UPARS? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think we've had anybody scheduled yet. Uh, nothing's been announced, so I just talked to Steve this week and see uh, who we have next. Okay. All right. And uh, contact in the desert. Am I going to see you out there next week? No, not going to make it, actually. Oh. So you'll see Steve, I think. I believe he's going to make it out there, but yeah. I won't be there. Okay. Well, we'll miss you next week, Alex. All right? And uh, I'll talk to you over the weekend, my brother. Okay. No problem. See you, Jimmy. Alex Mistrada, everybody. Okay, I'm going to answer these calls in order. Let's go to uh, uh, this first. You're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Hey, this is Ernie from West Covina, Jimmy. Ernie, how up, are up you, sir? How I, are you? I, I am doing very well. Thank you very much. What's up, my brother? <laughs> Everything is good, Ernie. You know what's funny? Great. Last week, uh, Dino called yes, in. Sir. And uh-huh. I got email that said that I called Dino Ernie. I was like, what? No, I didn't. Did I really? Had Ernie I on the brain. <laughs> so, I think you did. Oh, I apologize but to anyway. Dino profusely. So um, how are you doing? What's no, going on? Apolo- you should apologize to me. Yeah. Well, well they, there you go. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Ernie. <laughs> no, I'm just ragging. No, All yeah. right. Listen. But, yeah. One thing that has bothered me for a number of years, Jimmy, is Roswell. I'm not totally sold on it yet. I'm on the fence, and mainly because uh, there's been a cottage industry, a major cottage industry, that have come out of that Roswell incident. And as much as I love Stanton Friedman, he's got a pretty good little uh, uh, nest egg going for him right there. Uh, and also, uh, people will do anything, and I'm not talking about Stanton or necessarily anyone who's um, uh, into uh, the Roswell incident uh, as far as writers and uh, so on and so forth. Right, and I'm but with you. I'm with people, you. People, people who claim to have seen these little bodies and so on and so forth, I, I kind of dismiss them. I, I, I give them about maybe a 45% uh, percent to 55% of believability. I, I just, uh, you know... Uh, put my name in a book, uh, put my name on a paper, get me on uh, unexplained files. Uh, I'm re- I'm really stumped about uh, the Roswell incident. And what's your take on it? Check this out. This is, this is, okay, this is it. Okay, now it's time to get uh, edumacated. Okay, this is, Let's this is. down to where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> this is, this is my take. Something crashed. Yes. Right. 
the the Air Force, the Army Air Force, the Army back then, uh, without question, knows the difference between a weather balloon or anything else, anything else, any aircraft, anything else that would have been in the sky that would have landed in the desert, and it would have been a non-story. Okay, so they don't. There's no need to uh, fly a weather balloon to Wright Patterson. There's no reason to do that. Correct. Now, all Correct. of the original press releases, radio reports, and everything else that was put out by the Army said that, and if you listen to all the original radio broadcasts and everything else, everything that was released was that the saucer was put on a plane, the parts, and was flown to Wright-Patterson for, for further study and investigation. And yes. therefore, th- something crashed. And the Army didn't know what it was. They said flying saucer. Um, now, what crashed, we don't know. We, we, you and I, we don't know. We weren't Correct. there. But um, what now, that, that part of that's where, for me, the, the rubber does meet the road. I do believe all of that. What it was, I don't know. But we still what, don't know. What, what took off from there, that cottage industry that you refer to, um, that's where the story, uh, just got a little bit stranger and stranger, just like, you know, you know what it was like when you played that game called telephone when you were a kid, right? <laughs> get 10 yeah. of you in a row, you whisper elephant in the first ear. And by right, the time it right. gets to the last ear, it is the word, uh, tree. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so, so th- this story um, it went from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person to the next person. And then now we've got the nurse and we've got the, the mortician right. and we've got, uh, uh-huh. we've got the autopsy going on at the hospital. We've got, you know, bodies and caskets in the, in, in, in the hangars and, uh, you know, just, is missing. Yes. Yes. And the, the famous Sergeant with the red hair or whatever, you know, I mean, all of the, 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 the story got more fantastical now, mm-hmm. I'm now all of that story, all of it, all of it, the small caskets, the, uh, the autopsy that went down, uh, in the hospital, the ambulance that was showing up, the, the, uh, you know, all of the government personnel that are there. All of that uh-huh. was, is is based on on some type of fact and truth. It's it's how it got amplified, you know. It got amplified and and um, not to say, but you know, when you hear a story from somebody that heard it from somebody else, everybody's going to embellish. It is just human nature. I'm not angry about that, but for me, you've got to just kind of weed through the mess and get through it and, and just get to the facts. What are the facts as we know it? The facts, the hard facts. Well, the, the, the Army told us something crashed. We put it on a plane, and it went to Wright-Patterson. When you look at those photographs of Jesse Marcel and Ramey, uh, uh, was it right. Ramey uh-huh. uh, uh, sitting yep. there with uh, <laughs> with that debris, which is obviously a kite or what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, I, I say I say kite in jest, but but that's kind of what it reminded me of, and um, uh, that that is not a flying saucer. And we all know that. And so they they change. There's no reason to put that on a plane and fly that to Wright Patterson. There's no uh-huh. reason. No, you you put that in a jeep and you and you drive it to a dumpster and you throw it away. There's nothing. You know that's there's nothing to that. So uh, the facts are very simple. They put something on a plane uh, or planes and uh, took it to Wright Patterson, and that's where it sits. What what it is, you know, I I don't know if we'll ever know. But we certainly don't know today. But those are the facts. Yeah, I do believe something crashed right. out there. Right. Whether it was also, Russian, German, us, you know, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, it, was it them? Was it ET? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know something crashed, and the military did not know what it was, and that's where I sit. So, and here, and here's another thought too: How can something that can travel, uh, let's say, through wormholes, and just uh, get ahead of the time continuum 
just crash. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. With landing lights. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you on yeah, that. Yeah. You know, you, you traverse the universe, you fold exactly. space and time, and then you get out here and then you suddenly forget how to fly. Well, okay. All I right. The, I get that. I, I hey, the orig- hey, Ernie, yeah. listen, I've got yeah. uh, calls backed up, my brother. Is okay, it okay so- if I take another call? Absolutely. Please do. Ernie, <laughs> Ernie from West Covina, everybody. Thank you, Ernie. <laughs> Okay, take care, my brother. Take care. Bye. Okay, let's go to, oh, it looks like Indianapolis is calling. Oh, I just dropped the call. Okay, um, Indianapolis called back, and there was a, I didn't see, I didn't recognize the other uh, area code. Started with a seven, I think. Uh, the phone lines are open. All right, so just uh, call right back. Ten-second delay. They're going to hear my voice, and then boom, uh It'll be right back. But uh, Indianapolis. Okay, yeah, here we go. Indianapolis. Indianapolis on the line. This is Fade to Black. You're with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. This is is Allison Bell. No way. Allison Bell. You know, we were just talking about you. Yeah, I heard that. (laughs) Uh, Renee made me do this, okay? Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay, I'll be I'll be I gentle. Have. Oh, guess who's guess who's calling next? Space Who? Space Boy is right behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be No, 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 Allison. I'll be brief. Uh, no, no. I just <laughs> let's just say it out loud. Uh Space Boy, when you hear Allison hang up, call immediately. Okay. All right. Allison, what's going on, man? Uh, we're, <laughs> I'm going to see you in a in a week. Are you coming into contact? No. Oh, I, I, we thought you I were I wish coming. I was. That's why I want video. I want pictures. I want the whole nine yards. I really do. A- Allison, you know I'm from Indy. Uh, where uh, Where are you in yes. Indy? I'm in Noblesville. You're in Noblesville? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, I'm a little north, and I'm kind of like two blocks away from Deer Creek. Yep. And that's why I'm always talking about hearing music at night and how nice it is to sit out and listen to you and listen to music. <laughs> well, I used to work, uh, when I worked at Bell Laboratories, uh, in research and development, I was, a I was an artist. I wasn't a, you know, one of the brainiacs there. I was an artist, but, uh, we were up, uh, the three buildings were right there in, at, uh, Castleton square. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you head up, uh, What's uh What's the freeway that goes around Indianapolis? Um, the four four sixty five. So you know you take yeah. the four sixty five all the way up to Castleton Square, and as you're coming around the corner there, instead of going to Castleton Square and going to the right side or the outside of the loop, right there on the inside, there's three buildings right there, and that was uh, Bell Laboratories. So not too far from you. Yes, sir. not too far from yes, you at sir. all. Yes, sir. That's true. I used to work right next door to them so yeah i'm totally familiar and then I, you know i went to warren central high school well now you're not talking to a real indie grown-up here person i spent 47 years in chicago before i kind of like transplanted myself here. and that's even stranger that's where i was born so there you go uh-huh. that, that's kind of weird yeah that's kind of weird allison yeah. so what's shaking you got a question <laughs> for you got a question for me tonight what's going on well well I want to make a comment about everybody's you, – you guys have been talking about – okay, first off, let me preface this. I have part-timers, and that means I have half of my vocabulary about one-third of the time. So just bear with me here. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I'm the same way, so there you go. <laughs> so. Oh, no <laughs> one would ever know that, okay? All right. All right. You guys have all been talking about these immaculately dressed aliens Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um, the telepathic content that went with it. And and yes, I've read those reports. My idea is, and the question I ask is, if our visitors have been here on this planet with us continuously for as long as they have, since the Anunnaki and maybe before. Right. Who's to say that they aren't totally integrated at this point into our society to the point where you could pass them in the grocery store, mm-hmm. at the drug, in the mall, mm-hmm. or at 
Wally World, and that's right. what caused that pretty storm last night. <laughs> but and that was my oh Lord, that was my point. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, and who's to say? Uh, who's to say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They yeah. their abilities aren't good enough to totally mask really who they are on a telepathic level and that we have been trained so perfectly to notice what we notice or to look at life in a way that says that discounts what's right before our eyes so that they can pass before us with perfect anonymity and that we would never know it in a million years. I, I, That's my point on that. Last night when uh, uh, Richard Dolan was on and we were talking about this and I made an offhanded joke about Jacques Vallée and I said, you know, he's an alien and uh, Richard laughed. But I had watched... Um, I'll recommend this video uh, right now to everybody that's listening. There is a, a video series uh, with this doctor. His name is Mishlove, uh, M-I-C-H-L-O-V-E. And go uh, look at the interview that he's got a whole interview series that is just great. Terrence McKenna and some other stuff. And and this, uh, he's a psychologist. And he... Um, uh, is fascinated with the UFO subject, and he's got Jacques Vallée on. And I'm looking at Jacques, not, and it's not the Jacques from today. This is like a 20-year-old video uh, interview. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, Jacques Vallée's an alien. You know, look at, look at, <laughs> look at that. Look how he speaks, and, and I'm not talking about the Jacques Vallée of today, uh, or something recent. Go look at that video. And it makes you wonder about his message that now I'm not saying anything about Jacques, uh, not at all. And we've reached out by the right. way to get him on the show that what I'm saying is you just don't know. And you're looking at, um, uh, I'm looking at this video and I'm listening to what he's speaking about. And I just thought, what if, if, uh, if the penetration is there and they are among us, it would be a guy just like Jock. You know, with a message and speaking to us, and you just wouldn't know. And I, I totally agree with you. You ju- you don't know. You don't. You really don't. And if they, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. and their their ability would be just that uh, to yeah. to uh, present themselves in a way Blend that would, perfectly that we would be comfortable. You know, that we wouldn't raise any questions. You know, how about the mailman that's coming to your door that you love, that you give Christmas gifts to every single year? You know, it's just that's my point. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I'm I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. A hundred percent. Allison. The other thing I wanted. Yeah, go ahead. (laughs) Okay. You know how you're always talking about deja vu? Yep. And I have this little theory and I'm going to try and explain this so you can make a picture in your head. But imagine yourself as this little dot, and then imagine this big envelope uh, globe that exists around you that is time. Not time linearly, as we know it, because I think time is a construct that we use to exist in the three-dimensional world. So if we were outside of 3D, what would time look like? Time might be this bubble. And depending on which way your consciousness was focused, you would be up, down, sideways, um, or at any degree around that globe. And that I think that your ability to experience deja vu is a gift in being able to focus anywhere within that globe, anywhere within the time that we have created as a 3D being and look at that and pick out what's relevant. Well, yes. And I agree with you. Um, the reason why, uh, deja vu for me flips me out so much. And I, I go back to the earliest memories that I had as a child. And when this, this crap would happen to me, and it, I, I'm talking about first grade, second grade, 
you know, that, mm-hmm. that age yeah. when I would, you know, walk or with a friend or go up to a teacher or whatever and walk into the classroom and go, wait a minute, hold on, <laughs> what is going on here? And I would hear the teacher speak, and I would know exactly. I mean, at a very, very, very young age, I don't have memories yet, you know. And and exactly. and and this would go down, and I didn't know, and I would trip on it. I would trip on it a lot, and it yeah. it is something that has happened to to me my whole life. And <clears throat> so I always questioned uh, when we we refer to time travel with the future um and uh, but the future hasn't happened yet and and so therefore you know Only and, and in you, our perspective well Only yeah what what i mean by that yeah allison absolutely and what i mean by that is that's the argument that you always get coming back at you you know how it's impossible to time travel because then people from the future would be here among us right now all the time, and they would talk to us about time travel, and they would talk to us about the future. You always hear that argument. But then I back up and go, wait a minute, man. Deja vu. Somebody knows my future. Somebody knows what's going on because I, I, I'll i have these repeated thoughts and dreams, um, and then they end up happening either years later or a month later. Whenever. It doesn't matter. But it happens. And and damn it, it's real. It's real. You know, yes. so that's that's it, is, it. It's very real. And I totally agree with you. And I think it's you already knowing more about you than what you've been told by society that you are allowed to know. Um, have because, you? Had, OK, go ahead. Huh? Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to uh, ask before uh, before I let you go and you can stay with us as long as you'd like. But. Um, have you ever, do you think you've ever, uh, you know, met somebody, uh, an alien that was integrated into society? Did you ever stop and question maybe what you were? Th- well, uh, yeah. And I've been chasing this idea for maybe the last year. And as I let it rumble around in the back of my mind, more and, and more realizations about, oh my God. I remember, and holy cow, could that have possibly been? And yeah, the more I think about it, yes, I think I have. I think basically, and and I think this is why you've seen aliens that are perfectly dressed and look very expensive and look high society. We tend to allow those people to be a little eccentric, don't we? Because... Rich means you get more privilege and you get to do whatever you want to do. And if you're dressed really nice, you have a lot of money. And it's like, okay, well, we'll deal with however crazy you want to be. That's part of that kind of thing that they put out that protects them. So you can walk, especially the newbies. People that have, I think the visitors that have been here for a long time, are totally integrated into society, and you would, unless you were looking for it, never notice. But the people who are obvious are here on like a vacation. <laughs> like <Mary. I> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Brad Kelly just uh, he just posted on Twitter. He says Dana Bash from CNN is an alien hybrid, <laughs> and he posted her picture. <laughs> Uh, and then Ken Lipson, he just said uh, Car- Carrot Top is a, it's an alien. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the fade or not. Uh, and man, do they tend to get a lot of trouble. Let me tell you, what a group of people. It, it, They're it, dynamite. It's humbling and, and it, it is just so humbling. <laughs> I love it. And it's our little family and it's growing too. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, but yes. everybody oh, just yes. gets along and that's what it's all about. And like I said, this show is for you guys, Allison, and and, and it, you know, uh, every Thursday I'm just uh, geared up and fired up, and and uh, I, I can't tell you how uh, how great of an experience it is. Okay, here's Space Boy, Allison. Let's get to Space Boy. All right, thank you, honey. Thank Come you. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Allison Bell, and now I <laughs> I'm so humbled. Space boy. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, my friend? (laughs) 
Wow. <laughs> Allison and then Space Boy. Ernie tonight. Ken. Wow. You know, uh, I, I, Renee from Tucson. And uh, I, I just, it, it, it's just great. It's just absolutely great. You geeked up about next week? Yeah, really. I am. I, I can't wait. Um, in fact, um, to be honest with you, uh, this is kind of, I guess it kind of leads into a story I was going to say. You know, ever since I was a young man, a long, long time ago, um, I used to get these books when I was a kid, you know, for Scholastic, would, you know, they'd, they sell these books. And I was the one that would get the uh, Bigfoot and UFOs and the Loch Ness Monster. And, you know, I've, I was always been, been interested in the subject. And something that uh, Lynn Lewis was trying to get us to, to talk about when we came on tonight was to talk about an experience we've had. Okay. Unfortunately, I've never had an experience. Uh, you know, I've been the one without the experience my whole life. So going to the desert is kind of going to be interesting for me because. I'm going to get to meet all these people that have had these experiences and see them firsthand and see how that goes. So I'm, I'm jazzed about it, Jimmy. I can't wait to go. Well, this is the thing. And I, there's a couple of things I, I want to talk to you about, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But I, you were, I think you were like me as a kid. I would go, no matter what, if I hit a library, okay, and I don't care what age I was, I would go straight to the UFO section. You know what I mean? I would try to find some UFO books. There'd be two or three um, or, or four. But I would, that's what I would do as a kid. I would always, whatever library, uh, all the way through as an adult, if I went to Barnes & Noble, I would go to the UFO section and, uh, and, and, and buy whatever I could buy and read and look for all of the new stuff. And I did that all the That's what I did. That's what I gravitated to. Everything else, well, automobile books too, you know, you know, Ferrari books, but, but, um, but that's what I would gravitate to and, and buy. And, uh, what, the, what was that called when you were growing up? A weekly reader or whatever that checkbook, you know, that they would pass out in class and you would buy your books, um, right. and, and go home to mom and, and have to, you know, beg for $2 so you can get your book. Um, I would do the same thing. I would I would go through and look for something on the aliens. I'm in the third grade, you know, looking for Project Blue Book in uh, 1970 on the weekly reader chart. So, um, and by the way, for for the callers that are calling in right now, I'm looking at you. Uh, uh, in just a second, I'll open the lines back up, okay, and, and call right back. Um, uh, but anyway. Uh, you had made a comment, and I talked about this on the air, not to do the coast-to-coast -coast conversation because, you know, they do their show, we do our show. That's not the point. But right. um, you took your music to them and didn't get a response. And I, that's shocking to me. You know, you, you really want to open a can here, don't you? <laughs> well, you know, in that, uh, well, because, uh, well, you know what? I, I'm from the music industry, you know, so that's the thing. I've got an ear. So maybe that was the difference. Maybe the, uh, you know, the folks over there that are listening just didn't get it. And, and who knows what, what makes it on the air and what doesn't over there. You you just don't know. So maybe I'll give you some solace in, in, the, in that thought. Maybe they, they just don't get it. Let me, let me throw it at you real quick. Since well, remember this though. Remember Van Halen, you know, got turned down 50 times. And, uh, so think about that. I remember, let me tell you a story. You want a story? <laughs> Go ahead and tell me, Jimmy. There's a, a music executive out there. His name's Larry McPherson and Larry, uh, used to run Capitol records, but before Capitol records, he was over at giant records and I'm sitting in Larry's office one day and this is how it goes down. He comes in and I'm not, and I'm saying this publicly out on the air. Uh, the demo tape comes in for um, uh, Jagged Little Pill. What's her name? Um, uh, uh, oh, I can't believe I, I, I can't remember. Lance. Alanis Morissette. And I'm sitting in his office talking guitar and, and goofing off. And they're talking about, you know, it, let's, you know, check out this demo tape. It's, a, it's this girl named Alanis Morissette. She's really hot. And, and somebody's going to sign her. And, and we need to do, and they were like, you know what? I, I, I don't get it. 
And and Larry, I think, got it, but he couldn't convince other people at the record company. And and I watched this argument ensue back and forth about signing Alanis. I'm saying this publicly. I was right there. I saw it. I saw it go down. And they passed on her. And what they passed on was like at that time what turned out to be like the biggest selling album of all time. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what they passed on. They yeah. passed on a thirty million selling record. And some people get it and some people don't. Okay, so there you go. But I got it and I've got you and now you're part of us. So you know what? We get the last laugh, Space Boy. Well, it's a you know, it's a real treat. Uh it's like I, I was gonna say, you know, uh, back in May. Um, I had been listening to your uh, your theme music, and I said, you know, I just would like to just try something out and send it to you, and you know, just for fun, and um, and it, it's worked out. And it's like I tell you, every time I hear it, there's a big smile on my face, uh, to knowing I'm a part of the show. So it's well, in, in that aspect. And this is this is the funny thing. <clears throat> in the very, 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 very beginning of this show, you'd have to go back and listen to the first 10 or 15 episodes of the show, I would think uh, my memory is, is, is a little fuzzy now, but that music, the original intro music was me. Okay. That was a song that I wrote and mm -hmm. it was from an album that I did. That's me playing guitar, drums, bass, everything on that, those tracks, keyboards. And that was it. It was kind of heavy, you know, and that album is really heavy. But anyway, so then Kovar takes it and turns it into something else. And so it was his interpretation of, which I loved. I, I dug it that somebody would take my original germ of an idea, you know, a little thing in the ground that you're trying to grow and take that, evolve it into that. And then you turn around and evolve it into something else one more time. And I, I just love it. And, and it's, it's crazy to see something go through stages and evolve and, and get repainted. And I just totally dig it. Totally dig it, Space Boy. Totally. I, I so, appreciate it, yeah. So I'll see you next week. I've got another call coming in. I'll see you. You're, you're, you're pulling into town on Wednesday, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. And then, uh, of course, we will see you Friday morning. And uh, or Friday afternoon out of contact in the desert, and we'll start to rock and roll this thing. All right. Well, last, let me do, let, just let me say this real quick. Sure. Fade or not, fade or not, <laughs> fade or not, fade or not. Uh, when someone decides to call in, Jimmy, yes. then we'll up his game. <laughs> it, it, anyway, I love you guys. Keep it real. We'll see you in the desert, man. Yeah, you got it. I'll see you in a few days. Thank you. That was right. Space Boy. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. Let's just go right to the next caller. You're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. Um, my name is Rich, and we'll just call me Just Rich. Okay. Just Rich. <laughs> okay. Just Rich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you're calling and, from um, you're calling from somewhere here in L.A. Where Where are you calling from? No, well, no, actually, the phone number is from South Bay. Oh, okay. Uh, from most uh, Redondo, uh, but um, actually in the desert. I'm in uh, Palm Springs Cathedral City. I think that's where you come in next week, right? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. We'll be out there uh, a week from tomorrow. And we'll try and make it. Um, I chase you all over the damn radio from, <laughs> from COP to uh, Jimmy Tourist to Fade the Black. And uh, I got you now because there's not many people that I hear uh, information from. And can really relate to it. And um, I, this is not really me. Um, I never called anybody in my whole life in terms of uh, conversation and talking. But here in the desert, it, you just have a lack of intelligence, basically. <laughs> oh, and, I, <laughs> and I miss talking to a person with a, a working brain. Oh, well, thank you for that. But, uh, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. Trust me, Rich. Yeah, it's well, smoke. it's called marketing, and that's what I <laughs> retired from about five years back. So out there in Palm Springs, uh, you must, and, and I'm envious of this, but you must look to the skies and see stuff all the time that you can't explain. All the time. All the time. Give me, give me, give um, me, give me your, your, your best. Uh, there's, certainly there's one that stands out. 
Uh, well, you know, we live right on the fault line here, actually, right? The San Ysidro Mountains is where the fault line starts and goes through and back to L.A. Right. And there's always the lights there in the mountains, and they go one side to the other, come down to the uh, valley here at Coachella, right. and disappear back in the mountains. I hear these stories all the time. I was talking to uh, somebody that lives out there in Palm Springs last week, and she was saying, she goes, Jimmy, you have no idea. Come out here. Just come out here. Bring Rita. Come out here. Uh, My husband and I will take you to a couple of spots, and I promise you we will just sit there all night, and you can watch lights come and go from these mountains. And it's no, fascinating it's, to just sit and fascinating. see. Fascinating. Just bring your uh, uh, binoculars, your uh, uh, what, the ones that uh, clear up the sky. You know, so the, the 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 dots that are moving, you can actually make out if you've got those uh, binoculars. What What do you think it is? Well. Uh, <laughs> I've been watching these things for years as a, as a young, you know, seven or eight years old. Um, and I recently moved out here uh, three years ago and figured this is you know, my last stop. Um, but you can't get away from them. They're, they're all over. And if you say anything, uh, you're crazy or, or uh, 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 you know, someone needs uh, some medication twice a day. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is your um, uh, experience with what you call uh, uh, deja vu. Right, right, okay. It's actually not deja vu, it's intuitiveness. And some people have it, and some people have it really bad, strong. And I, I started noticing mine at seven or eight or nine years old. And you know what? Uh, it took me 20 plus years to say anything to anybody about it because, you know, I was already a, a crazy uh, dad and I simply didn't want other people to think I was crazy and keep the kids away from my kids. <laughs> right. Don't go to that man's house because he sees lights. <laughs> uh, oh, well, you know, we'll get back to deja vu in a second, but you know, the thing is, and you're right about Palm Springs, it's like everybody knows what's going on, but nobody really wants to talk about it. I mean, you're absolutely right with that because it goes on constantly. And I don't know if it's, uh, if it's uh, Indian uh, spirits. I don't know if it's something other world. There's all kinds of uh, military installations out there, too, as well. So it could be something like that. I, I don't know what it is, but everybody out there knows it goes on. Everybody talks about it. Everybody, oh, well, everybody knows about it. Everybody sees it. But you're right. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to be the crazy person on the block. Hey, uh, turn me uh, down in the background if you could. Okay. You're, you're gone. Okay. Uh, uh, the intuitiveness is something that your brain um, produces through your subconscious to your conscious brain during the day. Well, it could be a, a dream at night or a, a daydream during the day. Yes. But, um, well, you, you I, also, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump in because I don't want to let this thought go. You also mentioned that you didn't talk about it for 20 years and oh, I, I did yeah. the same, I did the same thing. Now, I, now I'm talking to everybody about it every single night, but I, it was something that I carried around with me my entire life through childhood and through adulthood. And I never talked to anybody about it. And sometimes yeah. it would, it would happen every single day. And I, I just stop, I, 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 you know, you know what I mean? And you just can't sit down with somebody and start talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, one, it's personal Two, it could be potentially embarrassing. Three, you don't want your friends to look at you in a, in a strange way. So you've got all of these right. things working against you. So you just bottle it up, but I'm here to tell you, I'll say it publicly. That stuff is real. And I don't know who I don't know who knows the future that is bringing it back and putting it into my brain, or if it's me. But deja vu is real, and that just means all forms of paranormal stuff are real. And I think I think we just lost Rich. 
the call dropped. All right. And you know who just called in? So I'll just say it out loud. Dino was next in line. So uh, Dino, uh, Rich is probably going to call back. If you want to jump in before, before Rich, get on it. This is Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. I was watching um, Nancy. I'm just going to let you know, I've been uh, following everything that you've been saying all night. And Nancy, you crack me up. And Na- Nancy, you need to call in. And I know you can hear me right now. And I know you've got me on speed dial, Nancy Burns. Or is it Nancy or is it Bill? Is this Nancy tonight? I, I-, I just never know. But uh, there you go. This is Bespoke Radio for the Masses. You want to follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio. I haven't been back. We've been taking calls all night. I haven't been back over to email. Uh, oh, there's Ernie. Ernie just jumped in. Let's just go straight to uh, Ernie. Dino, Dino, I just called you Ernie again. <laughs> why Why do I do that, my brother? How are you this evening, Jimmy? I'm Great doing evening. fantastic, Dino. And as you know, it's never a... It's never a fade to black without Dino. So, okay, I want to make something clear tonight, though. I, I I think that because I call in often, I don't want to be someone who who dominates or leads things. I'm still learning about these subjects as much as I know. I know that I learn, and uh, I think you're right. We've become we're becoming a nice little family here. And what I like about the show tonight, what I would suggest is uh, that I'd like to hear more about some of these people that tweet. They don't have to call in all the time, but I'd like to hear what brought them to this area of interest and research. As I I think a lot of people who listen know, I've never seen a a UFO that I could really say was an alien spacecraft. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've met an other. I've met some unusual people through my life, and perhaps I've had funny feelings that were intuitive, I think. Uh, but I'd like to hear more from other people. It was great hearing from Allison and these other folks. Right. Yeah, I'm totally with you. And you want to hear the, you know, the voice behind the curtain, so to speak. And, uh, yeah. and there is, I, I will say this, everybody, all those fader knots out there and the, the people that are listening to this program tonight, the, you know, they gravitate, they could listen to anything. You can go and your time is valuable. You can go and listen to there's so many so so much great programming out there. But what attracts people to this show and 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 to keep returning and coming back and participate in email and and videos and 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 Twitter and and all of that and calling in. What what pulls everybody in, I think is honesty. And you can come here and 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 speak your mind, participate, comment, and and not face you know somebody going oh come on you know stop you know no it's not about that it's it's uh, it it is a family and and I think that's what uh, I think you know it's honesty when when I have a conversation look I I say it all the time but it's really true I don't there is not a guest. And I dare anybody to call in when I have a guest on this show and ask that guest if I ask them f- for 20 questions that you want me to ask you on the, sh- on the program tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not what goes on here. You don't get that. What you get is total honesty. It's just me sitting down and, and talking to somebody just like you and I are talking right now. And not only that, that, everything you've said is true, but you can't do it all. You're a very talented interviewer, and you try to get it on, but a lot of times I'll be listening to a, a, an important researcher, and I'll say, ask him this, and you'll see the, the tweet deck. I'll go, ask him this. Ask, <laughs> and all our minds together. <laughs> I know. I see the same. I know. Isn't that funny? You know what? You know what I didn't ask last night, and and I don't know who posted it on on Twitter, but uh, so let's see, uh, uh, let's see what uh, somebody says here. Uh, if we can get somebody to admit to it, but somebody said last night on Twitter, and I'm going to paraphrase here. Jimmy will ask anything. Uh, watch there. Jimmy's going to ask Richard what he had for breakfast, right? And I saw that, and I thought that is a Jimmy Church question. 
right there. Well, and and but I didn't do it, and I meant to, and I apologize because I was going to. I was going to ask Ritz or what he had for you, breakfast. We, we, we must we must both have Sagittarius rising because I, I want people to know I I know that I have the gift of gab. I inherited from both my folks. I'm more comfortable communicating verbally. It took a long time to get into email for me and all that stuff years ago because I feel even my cell phone, I don't have a smartphone because you can emote and find so much more to me in someone's voice and a direct response, given response. So that's what I love about this show. But you got to do your research, just like college. You got to read up on the background so that you can ask things that don't seem quite right to these guests. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to. And, uh, you know, I do try to pose questions. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody. I, I want to challenge, but I'm not here to offend and I'm not here to uh, embarrass somebody. Uh, that's not what it's about. I would rather hear, this is the truth, I would rather hear somebody uh, just put forth their ideas, their expressions, their theories, their thoughts, their research out there so I can listen and then uh, develop my own ideas later. I'm not here to challenge somebody or to embarrass them. And, and if I did that, if this show had that kind of reputation, I, I wouldn't have any guests that would come on because uh, uh, of that. You know, it's, it's one thing to yeah. just get freedom of thought out there, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. Tell, tell tell us what happened to you. Tell what are you researching? What 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 you know? What interests you? What what is it about things? And yeah, and get yeah. that freedom of thought out. Look, this is the truth. Oh, guess who's calling next, Dino? Oh, uh, uh, Nancy Burns. Oh, okay. Well, I uh, just want to tell you if I'm allowed to continue to call in. Hopefully, God willing, on other Thursday nights, maybe I'll do a little more critique of certain guests or ask things that we should have gotten to. But I'd like to hear, has anybody requested that Charles Hall, who I thought was kind of a whack job years ago, but, you know, with the tall whites, you got to talk to him because I, I think I believe the guy. He's grown on me. Yes. And he would be a good guest. Yes, and he the would. the other thing is, a lot of the rock stars you know, you're more connected than I, but I do run into people. Someone mentioned Sammy Hagar, mm -hmm. and, I, and I do run into him occasionally. I'm not a close friend. But I'd like to know Paul Kantner, some of these people that are older rock stars that have written about, you had a show on this about, you know, Alien Encounter and their music. I'd like to have some of them interviewed, too, and get Dan Aykroyd, too. Uh, we're working on Dan. Sammy is somebody that I can reach out to. Uh, we are talking to uh, Dan's management right now about uh, getting Mr. Aykroyd on the show. So he is definitely Wonderful. on the front burner. So, all right, let me Wonderful. jump. And then Oh, you oh, got to get these other people back so we can question them. Dolan again, <laughs> Linda Moulton, Howe, Kerry, Casting, all those people. We have more to ask them. Dino, all the best. You too. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, Dino. Nancy Hayfield Burns, you are live on Fade to Black. Wait, I better turn this thing off. Wait, I can't turn my radio off. Oh, stop. No. Shush. Shush. This oh, that was that was that funny. Ah. That was hilarious. Uh, oh. I, I went on uh, I called into uh, Nancy and Bill's show the other night and uh before oh. Fade to Black and I listen to you guys uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know uh, when I can uh before the show and so I'm listening to you, and I'm so I couldn't help myself. I just was like, I, I got work to do. I got work to do. Ah, this is work, Jimmy. <laughs> so I called, and I pulled the biggest faux pas of radio. And I just did too. Oh, you did. Oh, I thought you were just messing with me, Nancy. No, no, no. I truly now I see how you do it. You just <laughs> the the veils between the worlds are just getting thinner and thinner. Yeah, they are. Aren't they? Ay, ay, ay. Listen, I want to answer question number eighteen that you sent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. I need sound yeah. effects. Boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah, that was so, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I, I don't do that. Do you do that? You don't do that. Oh, I have gotten, I have had a terrible week. Can I plug something since I'm here? What the yeah, heck? plug away, plug away. I'm finally, finally have, I'm reaching a, a little tiny nugget of happiness. And I'm going back to the, to my writing and to the novel that I had to abandon. And um, if folks would be so kind just to check out my website, that would be so cool. Oh, absolutely. Is this the one we were talking about? 
I'm not sure. Uh, 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 okay. Yeah. Well, before we, okay. We could be talking about two different things. So, um, and one is potentially negative. Oh yeah. Not future theater. No, I'm actually talking about my little personal website, which I've, I've named so humbly. <laughs> uh, what it, it is at nancyburns.com, is it? Well, it's nancyhayfield.burns.com. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's it's been a tragic, tragic story. A oh, can well, of worms what's a, what's we're a, not going to we're not going to talk about because uh, Space Boy won't talk. I'm not going to talk. <laughs> well, what's the book about? <laughs> uh, well, it's about time travel. Oh, right on. You see, and it's about uh, time travel. It's basically about time travel and. Oh, we just saw tonight. Um, it's just been available on HBO, I think. Uh, this one from ninety or two thousand and nine British movie, frequently asked questions about time travel. Love really that cool. movie. Love oh, that good. movie. Yeah, it was fun. Is that the yeah. first time you've ever seen it? Oh yeah, I've watched. It's been, it's been British, and unless you torrent, I don't see how a human could watch it. <laughs> unless you buy, or if you buy it from Amazon, I think you could buy. It the, in the PAL version or something. But, well, you know. um, uh, on DirecTV and on satellite, it's uh, it's one of those free movies in the science fiction section. You can go and it's... Uh, uh, I'm dying to see it. Oh, it is so good. Oh, yeah. you, you haven't seen it or you have seen no, it? No, no, I've never seen it till tonight. Just tonight. We just it, we were just... Oh, here's the thing. Let me give a life tip to anybody who's on TiVo, who's got an older TiVo. There's the most frustrating thing that they've been doing. They've changed their menus. They have two kinds of menus on TiVo. Uh, high definition and then standard definition. Right. And when I had some problems a long time ago, I called them and they said, well, go back to standard because we don't have our high def menus in good shape. So, And that solved the problem, so I never left standard and then i just recently went to go to netflix youtube this or that and it's just not available anymore and it's only when you just feel like you just you want to learn linux you want to get away from corporations you want to go open source you want to torrent the stuff Mm -hmm. then i sort of out of nowhere decided out of hopelessness to try the other menu and oh my god it's like alice in wonderland (laughs) and i'll never leave tivo now um... (laughs) i'll never learn linux the, the the thing is with uh-huh. um uh, and the title of the movie FAQ about time travel frequently yeah. asked questions about time travel the uh that movie deals with every single yeah. cliche yeah with time travel is yeah. dealt with and in in such a way that for for us fans <laughs> of time travel you're just like no really and then they just do it I love when the guy comes back in after he's traveled through a multitude of times and he's almost like a caveman now. Yes. He finally gets back to his friends and they give him some chips and it's the end of the world. There's devastation everywhere and he opens up the chips and he's eating it like crazy and they ask him, how how are the chips? And he says, off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. It, the, anyway, it, it's it's yeah. so good. And Anna Ferris is, is... I love her. Well, have, did you see her in that first movie called, I think, Smile or Happy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smiley Face. Smiley Face. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. About the pot cookies. Yeah, uh, she's so good. It, that she's movie... She's just funny. Yeah, is, she's, 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 she carries the movie, as they say. Well, you know what? This is the thing about Anna Faris. When you, when you cast her in a movie, you know exactly what you're getting. You don't want her to step out of who she is. Just let her be Anna Faris, and it's all good. Well, I also love the um, in, ta- in the FAQ movie, the, that crazy woman who comes in at the end, the editor. And isn't that ironic? Oh, the yeah, editor. yeah, yes, 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 yes. She yes. was great. Yes, yeah. yeah, she was cool. The one in black, yeah. in black leather. Yeah. 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 What, a, what a good movie. Well, I'm not going to hog your show because we're, I'm be, oh, here's, here's what I want to say. Talk about the 18 questions, 20 questions. Um, <clears throat> the reason I ask people to go to my website is because I wrote about, it's a big apology. I got a bug. <clears throat> Sorry. It's a big apology to listeners because I really, I mean, we had a great, I'm sorry that I kind of pushed him at you. We had a great guest on the show and I felt like I was taking up, I felt like I hadn't prepared or hadn't prepared, didn't feel like it hadn't. Um, and we had missed a show um, <clears throat> all because we had our grandkids visiting. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Hang, hang on. <laughs> You're going to be mute. all right. That's okay. <laughs> She's hitting the mute button. I love the mute button. I love okay. the mute button. People have no idea 
what I am doing when they don't hear me. That, that mute button is really nice. Yeah, well, just don't ever sit back on it when you think it's off. <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, so so I wasn't prepared. Um, Dr. Earl Farouk, he's really a really fun, fun scientist to talk to about one of the more important cases. Um, so I got just slammed in my uh, discus stuff. Boy, I, I'm so... I can't believe I, I pay for this or whatever. I, I go through all the programming just to get insulted. Right. But they're saying, you know, you didn't prepare. You should do better and you shouldn't, you know, anyway. Well, so, it's I, been a busy week. I, with me, th- this is how I deal with it. And I'm serious. I, it, and and I'm, I think I... Uh, I'm very nervous about um, uh, not uh, appearing really stupid, you know, because I know my own intelligence. I know where my intelligence level is. And I could, if I had on the wrong guest at the wrong time, things would go south really quick. Yeah, but quick. it's not your intelligence level, Jimmy. It's your curiosity level. Well, okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'll go with that. But And you always have curiosity, it seems. And that's what... I think the intelligence comes along. You just start Googling and Googling and Googling and you will get intelligent. Well, but I, the, you know, the curiosity. I, yeah. Start, yeah. I, you know, I've got, uh, you know, 20, 30 years of fascination behind me where, uh, not only, uh, well, you're married to bill. And so I, I can say this, I mean, bill is somebody that I have been intrigued with for a long time. And that goes with, uh, each one of my guests. So I'm fortunate that I'm able to bring on people that I know a lot about. You've got the brain core. Yeah. And, you know, but if I bring on somebody that I, you know, uh, that I, oh, man, I, I'm serious. It would go south really, really quick. My well, cover are, would are be you blown. Are you brought someone on you thought was way over your head? Uh, that I didn't know a lot about. If I brought on, you know, what I don't do, Nancy, and I'm serious about this, I don't bring on guests that come to me and say, I would like to come on your show. Here's, here's some interesting things because if I, if I do that, then I'm, I'm up against somebody that I don't know anything about. And I, you know, you know, I definitely do. I get some of my best guests that way. I haven't, I do think I have an instinct and I've been hoodwinked a couple of times with a couple of different cover stories. And then sometimes the people who, uh, are not real the real thing go on to become very famous in the field and I have to say with the sound with the radio that you're doing and there are lots of others doing radio as well the the conferences now are really they sound like they're taking off and are going to be wonderful yeah and I back agree. toward the end yeah you know, before this radio uh, re- resur- uh not resurrection what is this a renaissance I'd say yes uh, a revolution before this I mean there was nothing like this before and um I even um, helped finance a conference once, and they just – it was, it was uh, what do you call it, dust balls going down the you know, middle of the <laughs> convention hall. <clears throat> and you know, you're just in hell when um, – I mean, poor Jeremy Vandy. He, he, well, anyway, we, we lost our shirts, as they say. Right, right. And then you look at something like Contact in the Desert, and yeah. – that that has you know I was speaking to uh, Victoria uh, earlier this week and she's like this is out of control. Wow, it is out of control. And you look at who is going to be there, and and what kind of and this is only her second year. Well, and, what's her last name? Uh, you know what? I'd have to look at my phone. Okay, I'd have to look at my phone. That would be, why would you do that, Nancy? Well, see, there's so, see, there's, there's my intelligence. It's just my, no, my no, cover's no, no, blown. No, no. My yeah, cover's but you're blown. honest. That's the second thing. After but, curiosity, uh, <laughs> I'd put honesty. Seriously, uh, you're not going to get anywhere pretending that you're interested or, um, you know, and so, and repeating the same stories. My goodness. You know, That's, well, you, you guys, but, but you, but you guys, of radio, yeah. well, you guys do exactly that though, in that you, it's an open-ended show. It's an open-ended discussion and you guys go anywhere and you have that freedom and it shows. And well, yeah, it all, you know, that came about because beside the fact that Bill comes from a showbiz family, um, serious showbiz family and kind of it's in his, it's just who we are. Um, we once went out to dinner with folks younger than us, people we really thought were cool, cool folk. They, they knew all the really cool spots in town where, where the bar was open after hours and stuff. And Bill and I had a few drinks. It was, we were all walking 
this is, you know, walking little town. And w- Bill and I just started talking the way we do. And this couple sat back and the man was so, I don't know, hated, but fascinated by us and said, you people, it's like you're on a show or something. And we kind of looked at each other and said, wow, you know, instead of <laughs> we're, we're wasted on the couch. You know. <laughs> Well, you know, that's, like that's I said, tagline. you guys have that gift, you know, and, and I think that's what uh, it shows like yours and this one and and uh, what DMRN is all about. And I well, think see, that's I'm it. wondering, I'm wondering, it seems like the fans themselves created this extra day for you. And since it's just call in, you can kind of like get some sleep and just do the show. I'm wondering, you know, if we can all talk to Keith and just kind of do more of this kind of what the fans want type of Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, again, you know, that, that bespoke radio for the masses, that little tagline. Yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of that personally. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, know. well, you know, it's, it's the, the true definition of it, which is. Uh, it's true, you but know. you're just, you're so hooked on the spoke and the spoken word and the whole thing. And it's just, it's one of those things. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to run it in the ground, Nancy, until you <laughs> until you slap me upside the head with a raw fish. Well, right. I like I like all the cool things that are happening uh, on your show. It's one thing after another. So it's uh, everybody got their fans fade or not. Something really it's, it's great when this happens. And maybe, I didn't do any of it. We didn't. They did. Keith Keith must be really happy. Oh, let's hope so. Thank you, Nancy. Let me grab okay. some more calls. All the best. Give my best to Bill. Much love. Thank you. You Bye. too. Bye bye. Nancy Burns. Nancy Hayfield Burns. Thank you, Nancy. All right, let's just jump right to the next caller. Uh, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Uh, it's is Steve from Louisville, Virginia. Steve from Louisville, Virginia. Where's Louisville? Uh, uh, Bluefield. Oh, Virginia. Bluefield. I'm sorry. Bluefield. Where's Bluefield? It's a little uh, west of Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, uh, Warnock. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, around, around Blacksburg, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Okay, not too, close to Virginia. not too far from the water. Right. Okay, I got you. So, uh, what, what's shaking? Well, I'd like to. You have probably interviewed you know ninety five percent of the heavy hitters. I guess you can call them the ufology area. And what's your take on disclosure? You know, what what do you think? Um, being fed to the the general population, and you think in your, in your lifetime will we see overall disclosure on the subject? Okay. Um, before I answer that, what do you think? Well, I think that we are fed a steady diet of some some kind of disclosure. But it, but in you know the overall view of it, they, they're still I mean, a big issue from that you know the there are aliens that are visiting whatever that has been for like some time now. Okay, and I and I, and I agree with that. Now, and, and uh, let me g- get back to the the point that you made, which is I've interviewed ninety five percent of the heavy hitters, um, and you're right. And disclosure is something that we talk about um, almost every night on this show. And when you look at the, um, you know, Stephen Bass and you talk about Greer and, and, and Dolan and, and, um, uh, Keen, everybody has got uh, a different viewpoint on it. And I've been privileged to sit. It's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the center of a wagon wheel. If you know what I mean, I've got everybody on the outside of me communicating to the center. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm able to, right. Um, uh, uh, listen to everybody's opinion on this and it, it, it varies. And, you know, Leslie Keen, she seems to think that the government doesn't care that an elected official in Washington, um, has, d- doesn't know anything about ufology, doesn't know anything about ET. It's not on an agenda. It's, it's something that they don't care about. And so pushing Washington is not going to do anything and pushing elected officials isn't going to do anything. Then you have, oh, St- you're, I agree. Those guys are just puppets. Yes. So you have that. Then you have, uh, uh, you have Stephen Bassett, who is the exact opposite of that. And he thinks we need to push, 
uh, our elected officials in Washington, D.C., uh, and move towards disclosure. Um, and so, um, and then you have Richard Dolan, uh, who seems to think that it's going to happen from um, some type of mass event, and then they won't have a choice but to disclose. So, you know, you have these very, very, very distinct, different ways from very serious people um, that, you know, Leslie deals with uh, Leslie Keene, uh, Kane. I said Keene, I'm sorry, Leslie Kane. She deals with uh, politicians uh, not only in D.C. and from different administrations to uh, different uh, countries around the world. She deals with them all the time. And so does Stephen Bassett. And and Richard Dolan did his speech at at the disclosure hearings. That's one of the best speeches ever. And to, to, you know, go watch that ten minute speech, and and that'll set you straight. Well, now my take, uh, my take. What what would cause disclosure? Um, uh, I think I think it's going to come from us. And I'm I'm kind of on the Richard Dolan fence about this. I think that uh, it's going to come from us and something is going to happen uh, where it's going to be a mass sighting like the Phoenix Lights or something like that that is going to tip the hats where uh, uh, there is no question about it, uh, that, 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 uh, that they are here and that they have been here. And I think that's what it's going to take. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? I think so. I think it could happen tomorrow. Um, I think with, with all of the evidence out there, with all the uh, uh, eyewitness testimony and everything else, that every single day the evidence is just stacking up into a big pile, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that all of us, all of us know, all of us, I'm 100% of the population knows we are not alone. We are not alone. There's life out there. The question is, is it here? I think it is. And eventually, they are going to make their presence known. It won't. I don't think it's going to come from Washington, D.C. It is going to come from us first, and then they will say, okay, yes, this is what's been going on. Well, I really hope that it, that it does in my lifetime. I'm, I'm 40 and hoping that, you know, to see it happen, well, you know, is for anyone that has any any sense of intelligence and can you can't really fathom the size of the universe. I don't I don't think um Albert Einstein could fathom the size of the universe. <laughs> right. It, it's 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 beyond words. It's and to think that there is not that there is not an intelligent life form somewhere in the vastness of of universe is preposterous it's absurd it, it's totally it's absurd a, it, and and this is it, the thing and, and and let me let me drive this home you just said the universe is huge right okay it is it, it is humongo beyond description the amount of stars right. and, and galaxies right and then when you get to the edge of all of that there's another one. <laughs> and, right. and that, so, yeah, exactly. So it's uh, it's infinite. Intelligence is infinite. Life is infinite. I mean, it just continues and continues. And and so I think that disclosure will come from us. So it was Larry, right? No, Steve. Oh, Steve, I'm sorry. I, I wrote down Larry. Right. Why, why would I write down Larry? So thank you, Steve. And, okay. uh, uh, call hey, it. Take my call. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, what do you think about this Thursday night call in night? It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's great. It's great. I've been, because I listened to you back when you done your sports. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> I'm a big, um, big, big in sports, you know, love basketball, football, and, you know, baseball, the major sports, and, and listen to you when you've done your sports show. And then when you got into this, it took me, I think I probably talked to you on about your fifth. This show, when I finally called you, and I've listened to you ever since, and you know, glad that you changed up, you know, changed it to a four night, and then you got this call in night, and it's uh, it's a little difficult for me. I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I know. I was just, I was, just, I was just thinking about that. But uh, so yeah. you've been around 
uh, listening for the with the sports show. So you've been around for a while. So thank you, thank you, and uh, call in next week. Call in next Thursday. Hey, thanks, Jimmy. All the best, Steve. No, have a good one. Bro. You too. Let's roll right into the next call. And I will say this, everybody that's listening, uh, the callers that uh, were just backed up uh, right behind Steve, just uh, keep calling in. And uh, we've got another half hour yet, so we can uh, continue to squeeze them in. Let's go into the next call, Las Vegas. You're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Hey, this is Rick. How's it going? (laughs) Rick, are you ready, man? Are Are you ready? Yeah. Are you, are the bags yeah. packed? Uh, no, not quite. Yet. Not <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, mentally prepared. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if I, if I uh, yeah, I don't know if I am in, in the, in the music business and for the people that are, uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a big show every year. It's called the NAM show. N A M M the national association. You've been to NAM, right? Time. Yeah. And, and so, you know, um, sorry, I was reaching around for another uh, uh, pad of paper. Um, you know how big the NAM show is and what it means to the music industry. And every year you gear up, oh, man, we're going to NAM, we're going to NAM. And between summer NAM and winter NAM, I've been to, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 NAM shows. A lot, a lot of NAM shows. And, uh, and I feel like that, I have that feeling you know, contact in the desert. It's like, man, oh, wow. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm geeked up, man. I'm geeked. You, you know, honestly, I'm more geeked out. <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm more geeked out over uh, contact in the desert than I was for Nam, believe it or not. And I actually got a, uh, well, I guess you could say a diet version of uh, an endorsement of Rotosound strings out of Nam. Way back in the day. <laughs> Is that yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And um uh, yeah, that's 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 a funny story for, for later on. I was um I was farting around at the uh Conklin booth, um, testing out, you know, the uh they had a seven string bass that I was looking at buying and uh I was farting around with the uh fretless version of the seven string bass and this dude from Rotosound was talking to me, he was asking me, you know, what kind of strings do you usually use and i'm like well for bass i use the uh the willie signature mark uh signature model uh dean markley right 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 right. they're piano wild and he's like well what do you think about rota sound and automatically in the back of my head for the right price i'll play anything (laughs) so um (laughs) well you know what though i'll be honest with you i always thought Roto sound. There's a. Uh, I always thought Roto sound sounded best. Uh, that that no matter what the bass was, it had it had the the sound that you expected to hear out of a you know the bass tones. Always you know Roto sounds always sounded the best. When you go back um, to the early days of stuff like um, Chris Squire or Getty Lee when they were playing those Rickenbackers with Roto sounds and an Ampeg yeah. stack. That that sound, that sound. Yeah, the the SVT uh, tube. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yep. And th- there was a that 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 classic sound. Yeah, P bass. Yeah, I get all of that. I do, I do. And Conklin, he made some great stuff. Still does. But um, but that that ringy, bingy, bottom end, boom thing. I always thought uh, was best. Roto sounds, Rickenbacker, Ampeg, SVT. You were good to go. So. Yeah, for for four string, I always I preferred a uh, jazz bass with the uh, P bass neck. Yeah, there you the go. Jazz bass neck. Well, the jazz it, bass neck was always too thin. Yep, yep, yep. And jazz bass, you had more pickups too. You know, P bass, you only had that one uh, split pickup in the middle. So, well, wow, I, mean, I can't believe I'm talking. I'm talking bass guitar with Rick's in it, man. I <laughs> I had no idea. So, uh, so uh, yeah, eight. I've been I was playing since I was about eight. I did not know that, man. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. So what do yeah, you think, uh, um, you know, on this show where I can't help but talk music every night and mix that in with a little, little conspiracy and ufology? It's a good mix, right? <laughs> I think so. Well, yeah. I mean, it, there's just certain things that always seem to uh, mix around and musicians and artists and uh, artistically inclined people right. always get drawn towards like, the esoteric and the paranormal. 
Hey, uh, Rick, I've got a bunch of uh, calls backing up here. Uh, do you have a quick question, or you just call in to say hi, brother to brother? Combination of the two, just real quick, is uh, Ken and Les wanted a Bigfoot story. So, got a Bigfoot story. I'll do the quick one. Okay. Uh, my dad lives on Whidbey Island off the coast of Seattle. Yep. And I was talking to him one night, and... We were talking about our motorcycles, and he had to go check on something because I needed a part. So he's going out into his shed because he's he's out in the boonies. I mean, seriously, if you don't if you don't have your house lights on, you have no lights other than the moon and the stars. Now, is, that's so the island that's directly in Puget's or in the sound there that is connected to the with the ferry, right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I've stayed the I, uh, ferry from Mukatio. Yeah, I've stayed on that island a couple of times. Um, but yeah. uh, okay, so go ahead, Bigfoot story. Yeah, so he's he's walking out. He and I have always had a, a fascination of Bigfoot growing up and being from Northern California. Out camping, out in like Clark's Fork, I've heard howls and didn't really know what to think of it. So he's walking out, and there had been some sightings in that area uh, like a couple of weeks before. So he's walking out. The dog, he has a little uh, corgi. The dog just hightails him into the house. And all of a sudden, I can hear it over the phone, it, it, this howl, your typical Bigfoot howl. And my dad stops. He's like, no effing way. I'm like, what the hell is that? Are you, are, you, <laughs> are you degrading yourself watching that one show that we won't mention on right. this cover network? Right, right. And he's like, he's like no, I, I'm not in the house. I'm on my way to the shed. And then he goes, well, hold on. And he handed over the silence. And then clear the bell over the phone, I can actually hear it again. And I mean, just dead silence. So what happened? What <laughs> happened? What happened? You... Um, we, we hung on, I hung on the phone and, and we just had dead silence for a couple of minutes and if we could hear anything else and uh, nothing. After that, and there were two, two solid, I mean, textbook definition house and then nothing. And then, uh, what what did your dad see? Did yeah. he see him? No, he didn't. He didn't see anything. He, and, I mean, when I say he's out in the boonies, I mean uh, he's he has deer that walk through his front yard. I mean, it's it's out in the forest. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, he's way out in the thick of the forest. I mean, you'd almost expect to see a hobbit. I mean, that's how far out in the woods he is. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so he heard a couple of howls and uh, stuff like that, and for like the next month there were sightings on with the island. But uh, yeah, I mean, and it was—I don't know how close it was, but I mean, I heard it over the phone. I thought at first I thought he was screwing with me, but that's one thing that he will never screw with me about. Wow, wow! And I—I've yeah. I, stayed up there uh, a, a few times and. And uh, I've got another call coming in, Rick, so I'm going to yeah. go ahead and grab this. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the black helicopters that are, that are at uh, contact in the desert. Oh, I can't wait. And uh, <laughs> looking forward to it, man. So uh, I'll cool. see you I'll see you Monday night on the show. Cool, man. I'll see you then. Thanks, Rick. Good fun. Bye. Rick Sinnott from Las Vegas. Going to contact in the desert. Can't wait. One of the original fader knots. I think he might have named them. But uh, Rick Sinnott, and he entered the contest and won. Okay, let's go to the next caller. You're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Uh, this is Carola in Smithers, B.C. Carolyn in Smithers, B.C., British Columbia. And yeah. where where is that up there? Uh, well, it's pretty close to the south end of um, Alaska, Jimmy. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm driving. I'm I'm driving to Kitimat to bring my brother his uh, Dodge Ram. Uh huh. And uh, last night, um, I parked at a rest stop uh, to get some sleep, and because uh, it's a 20 hour drive to get up here from where I live. But uh, anyways, um, the stars were beautiful, Jimmy. You know. And I was talking to a friend of mine in the States, and he said Americans would be freaked out if they got somewhere and it was dark and that they could see the stars like that. Is that true? 
uh, well, I mean, I can only imagine up there. See, the thing is, uh, Carolyn, and this is the truth here in Los Angeles, um, uh, we are deprived of the stars and, uh, I, I'm jealous about where you guys are up there because you have, you know what I mean? You have a, a it's a yeah. theater. It's a theater. It's a 3D theater above you every single day. Down here, uh, we have light pollution. We have pollution, pollution, and and everything else. And we're deprived of the stars. And so, um, so I want you to t- t- tell me more. Just tell me more. Um, well, it's beautiful up here. I've been driving through the mountains all day. The air is so beautiful smelling with the tree smell and oh i'm telling you i'm pumped i'm pumped and i'm I'm driving to kitimat all the way to kitimat and and be- believe it or not kitimat uh they can drive uh big ship liners right up there it's in an inlet do you know where prince rupert is uh a little bit okay well kitimat is due east of prince rupert Okay. So, oh, oh, and in southern Alberta, Jimmy, I found, I think it might be a pyramid, although I'm not an archaeologist by any means, but it's covered with clay, and it's shaped like a pyramid, and it's in a really strange spot. How big is it? The pyramid? Yes. Mm, I would say it's probably about 200 feet high. Really? Can you take yeah. a pic? Can you take a picture of it? I think I did take a picture of it. Can you send it to uh, me? When I, was, I can send it to you. Just send it to Fade the Black or what? Yeah, just send it uh, to Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio dot com. Send it okay, to me. Okay, and there's these. It's surrounded by these big round rocks that just they're big round um, reddish rocks. They're like balls. But they're huge, like eight feet across. Um, is there a do, is there a name for it? Is there a reputation of it? You know what? What do the locals um, say? Well, the funny thing is, is it's it's just pretty close to the American border, actually. Um, let's see now. It's in between Medicine Hat and Lethbridge. That's in Alberta. Uh huh. Uh huh. And and it's called um, Red Rock Natural Area. I'm and writing all of this down. A, I want to find out about you? this. Yeah, I want to find out about this. Um, you should send me the send me the pictures. Send me the best description of it and and the names and and what's the closest town. And send me oh. what you got. And I would like to uh, find out about this. This sounds totally interesting. I mean, it sounds. I mean, do you think it's 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 not natural, right? You think it's man-made? Well, I don't think that... The, I don't know. Like, to me, these big round rocks, and they're kind of strewn around on this little canyon, and there aren't any like that anywhere else. It's just uh, prairie and regular canyon walls wherever the river is. I've, so I've, right there, there's about 250 of these big round rock balls. Right. And... Then there's this um, one spot where um, it's like a pyramid with the top part cut off because it's flat on top. I've got to see uh, this. On top, yeah. I've got and to it, see uh, this. The closest place to it is um, it's called Seven Persons, Alberta. S- Seven Persons, Alberta. All right. Yeah. I've got it, Alberta. Okay, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. All the best. All the best. Stay warm right. up. You, you, stay, you. stay warm up there. Oh, it's I'm boiling hot. I'm telling you, I just quit driving. I, I've got my windows open. I'm like cooling off. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Well, not, thank okay. you. Have a good so, night. Oh, Jimmy, if yes. you find a pyramid, I want to get some credit of it. Uh, absolutely. You've got to send me an email, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com, so I have your email. Okay, I'll send you the pictures, Jimmy. You got it. Thank you, Carolyn. From BC. You're welcome. Thank you. Near Alaska. 
Okay, let's just uh, let's go to the next caller. This is Call In Thursday on Fade to Black. Who's calling? RJ from the Arctic, Jimmy. RJ. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Now, I'm not going to ask you the same question because I have a, a very conscious level here of this, and what I've noticed is that you get asked that about a million times. How you doing, Jimmy? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> so I, I just avoid doing it because I've already I already know how you're doing unless there's been a change within the last couple of seconds. What's well, you've point, been you here know? since the beginning anyway, so you know it's all good. So, all right, well, that's good. That's good. Hey, uh, <clears throat> and where where are you idea. today? By the way, are you really far north? Yep, I'm way far north, uh, Prudhoe Bay, okay. Alaska. That sounds really yeah. north. Yes, <laughs> it is north. But you know, I was just—it's uh, funny that one guy that just talked to you talked about the sky, about how dark it is. Right. Think about being up here. You would think that we would have an amazing view, but we don't. Uh, last time I called in, you asked me about the large moon. We couldn't see it because it's broad daylight at night. <laughs> you know. Right. And uh, even even when it gets dark up here you see very few stars. I mean, there's nothing. And I, I don't know what it is if we're so far up, but it, it, in the winter time, of course, you have a little haze, I guess, in the sky. If you're lucky, you do see northern lights, but uh, it's, it's weird. I miss it. Cause, uh, is you know, that I in the right? Minute, uh, it, you know, I would think yeah. it would be the exact opposite. It, so would I. And it's depressing. Yep. Well, when I lived uh, down in the canal zone in, in Panama, you would go mm-hmm. out at night, and the edge of the Milky Way, right? This band of stars just wrapping around, and you could see what every what you know what you would see in books and things like that, um, and and hear what everybody talks about. Well, you would walk out there and see. I'm I'm talking about a gazillion, billion, trillion stars stacked up on just just insanely beautiful. And, yeah. and, and I witnessed it and I know that it's there here in LA, you walk outside and you see the moon, you know, if you're lucky and, and a couple of things up there, but yeah, we, it, we get mistreated here. You go out to the desert, go out to the Mojave and get away from the smog and the light pollution. It's a different story, but, um, I would think that up in Alaska that you guys would, would have this huge theatrical view every single night, but you're telling me it's the exact opposite, huh? It's all dark. Wow, that's crazy. It is. And up in the Arctic, it is. It's just, uh, it's kind of worthless in the winter um, and, and the summer, because like I said, you don't, even though the sky might be beautiful and clear, you're not going to see anything So because it's daylight. But um, I don't have anything specific for you, but I will tell you, I'm going to send you some photos here over the next couple of days as I find them um, with a couple of explanations and uh one in particular is a photo i took several years ago up here in the in a window and the window was covered in frost and uh it's i i call it birds because if you look at the frost uh and this this was in between panes of glass in an old camp and if you look at the pane of glass and the frost there are several birds in the frost i mean literally the frost formed birds and It'll be interesting to send it to you and see how many you can find, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to picture what you, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll send it to you okay. and you can post it if you want. But, uh, uh, you know, just weird stuff. And I always felt like, okay, something's trying to communicate with me through this frost. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but it would make a great movie. Uh, anyway, <laughs> beside the point, I want to tell you, keep up the good work, man. And uh, that. <laughs> I had a few other things, but we don't have time. And, uh, we we got a few minutes. One question. Go ahead. Let's bang one out. One question. I really don't have a question for you. Oh, um, okay. A comment. How about a quick, uh, how about a quick, very quick story? Yeah, coming from you, they're all good. Well, there's some that are good, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'll get on with it. You know, I was a police officer for 20 years, and one year I spent up in Point Hope, Alaska which is a very desolate little village, about a thousand people, no roads in, no roads out. There's a um, network of roads in the village that total about seven miles, but they go nowhere. Um, Historical site, but um, it's the Nupiak people. And I'll tell you something. I'll send you this photo as well. Um, I was walking down the street and I had this, uh, this elderly lady accompanying me. And she was known to be one of the last actual practicing shaman. 
And she was telling me about what it was like growing up in Point Hope. And uh, it was very interesting. And she was telling me about the first time she shot a seal. And as she told me the story, right above the area above the beach, in the clouds, the shape of a seal formed in, in a cloud. And it's uh, an orange cloud. And I'll send that to you because it's, I think it's, you find it fairly interesting. But um, – <laughs> Anyway, you're right. I've had some interesting stuff happen to me, um, manifesting things. And this is going to sound stupid. I'll send you a link to this, a story I wrote several years ago that actually happened to me, uh, referenced Ben Stein. Um, and it was, it's also pretty, I got a bunch of weird, weird stories for you, but, uh, they're, 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 are, they're always good though, Randy. They're always good. Oh, that's <laughs> good. That's good. I'll send you the links. You pick one to talk about. And one day I'll call in, we'll have a chat real quick and, and fill in the blanks. And, and, yeah. and you know the drill, man. You're always welcome. Okay? Right. I, Thanks. I, you know, good work. I yeah. like this open call thing. It's neat. Well, it's funny. I think you – weren't you my first caller like a year ago? No. You said that, and I did a little research. And the first time I called in for your show was the same night that you had um, – oh my gosh, I just forgot his name. Um, the gentleman from Fire in the Sky. Um, oh, Travis Walton. Travis Walton. Yep, yeah, that's the first night I called in. Oh, okay. Well, that's you, a, that's still back in the beginning, though. That, I mean, that's that. It was fairly cool. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. early on. Well, that's that's what I think, though. When I think of you and I hear your voice, I, I just I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever shake it. So you know what? That's our story, and I'm sticking to it. You you you're the first. All, right, <laughs> All well, the best. You know, you say, go go ahead. Go ahead. Be careful with that. I was a stand-up comedian for two years, too, and I'll take that kind of comment and run with it, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> right out, Randy. All the best, my brother. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Oh, I was going to back up right into another call, and that call hung up. Just call back. Everything's good, and uh, the lines are open. And, uh, okay, I just got an email, and so I will just say this out loud. Jack, if you can hear me, Call in. I think you're listening right now. I want Jack to call in. And uh, so I don't know what your number is, but uh, yeah, no, I do have it here. Okay, so I will look for it. And uh, so there you go, Jack. I want to talk to you. And you can hear me right now. Jack from Texas. I want you to call in. This is Fade to Black. Call in Thursday. Back to back to back to back to back. I can't tell you how much fun this is. And, uh, wow. And uh, the email I have, I have neglected Twitter tonight because of the phone calls coming in. I apologize for that. And email, I'm going to back up and I'm going to go straight to, I'm just going to go through some emails really quick. The speed of light is a constant, not a limit that comes in from Jeff Nasky. Okay. We've got another call coming in. Let's just grab it. And, oh, I think this is Jack. Jack, is this Jack? This is Jack. How are you, Jack? <laughs> Jimmy, how are you doing? I was just reading your email. Uh, 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 the uh, producers here sent it in and said, call this guy. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I can't call. I don't have the time to call. But uh, so there you go. You're calling in. What's going on out there in Texas? And t tell me about your show. What's, what's going on? Well, I'm on a... Uh... A reality show. It's kind of a secret top reality show. It's the wildest thing you've ever been through in your life. And I think my son is actually the one who produces it. Now, it's this is all kind of secret undercover type thing, but it is crazy. And I'm in Central Texas in Salado. Okay. But I'm sure, uh, like I wrote in my... Uh, email to you there. I listen to your show, so I know that the show that I'm on, all the people who listen to me, know who you are. <laughs> is that good yeah, or is that good it, or bad? It's crazy. That's got to be a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> what are What are they saying? <laughs> oh, I gotta I gotta know. Is it Is it good? It's good. Talk to me, Jack. 
but anyway, I don't have a very good connection. Uh, yeah, I can tell. It's uh, it's a little weak, but that's okay. What is your show about? Well, you know, that's just it. I don't... Uh, everyone knows about the show. There's... It's... It's... Jimmy, it's really crazy. Um, it's almost like I'm under home security in a way. Uh, I had... Uh, a pretty bad um, deal with diabetes and um, basically I've lost about a hundred pounds uh-huh and it's all been through the family that this show I think is they they keep me active they keep me going but anyway, I'm kind of a UFO nut, ufologist in a way. Right. And that's how I followed your show. You know, when uh, there's one weird thing, and I used to talk about this early on with this uh, with the show, but I can track uh, through some different matrices uh, who listens to the show from where around the world. And across the United States, this is the crazy thing, and I can't explain it, and maybe you can help me. There are, we have three basic pockets of, of listeners. We have the East Coast, we have the West Coast, and then we have Texas. Texas is, right. Texas is huge for this show. Um, uh, going around the world, Holland and the U.K., and Ireland and Scotland and Germany, yes. Um, uh, all through uh, Central and South America, yes. Um, uh, all of that is a presence for the show, and it's great. But Texas is well, that's, huge. That's, for, huge. That's pretty cool. I, I was listening to you last night. Talk, uh, you ended up talking about a sighting in Fort Hood. Yes, 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 Reading yes. Right, well, I'm about... 15 minutes from Fort Hood. I'm, I'm in Salado. Um, on I 35. I'm right between Waco and Austin. I mean, literally right in the center. Right. On I-35. Right. 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 And I'm looking at the highway right now, <laughs> but, um, I've seen things in the sky as well. Um, there's a couple of times. Well, one time I saw what I thought literally was a shooting star, but, is you know how fast the shooting star is. I mean, it's just a streak of light. Right, literally. right, right, right. But then the light just came to a, a standstill and just started going almost the speed of an airplane. So that was, that sighting itself was kind of different. Uh, and I noticed that right off my front porch. I mean, I live in the country on 12 acres, but... And there's not a lot of, uh, it's dark out here, so you can see the sky good. Right, right, right. But that was, that's one instance, and there's been a couple of others that, you know, but that was the main one. I mean, it literally shot across the sky um, just in a heartbeat. I mean, I thought it was a shooting star. I've seen many shooting stars, but this one just came almost like to a dead stop. And that's what caught my attention <laughs> and just kind of started about the speed of an airplane. What did you think? And I asked this question to uh, everybody that witnesses something like that. When you saw it, what did you think? Did you think it was from here or from there? No, I don't literally um, I think it's from there. Now I've listened to, uh, uh, or not from here. Let's, let's say that. Right, right, right. But then again, I've, you know, I follow a lot of things, the secret space program, that type of stuff. I've listened to your interviews with Kerry Cassidy, um, Richard Dolan. You know, you've got a good lineup. There's no doubt. It catches a lot of people's attention, especially, I guess, in Texas right. as well, like you were saying. So uh, there's a lot of open sky out here, uh, not a, a lot of interference with light. So you see things. Right, right, right. 
Absolutely. Hey, Jack, uh, call in next week and uh, we'll, we'll take all of this a step further. And I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna grab one more call and uh, and and wrap this show up. I've got two minutes left. Thank you, Jack. Jimmy, have a good evening. You Thank bet. you, and tell everybody out there in Texas, what's up? We love you, and I love my Texas crowd. Thank you, man. Okay, Jimmy, take care. All the best, Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson from Texas. All right. Oh, I just missed the last call of the night. Okay, we got two minutes left. Two minutes. That call that just came in, you better redial right now. I'm going to start rolling credits. And oh, there it is. You got to love it. You got to love it. You're live with Fade to Black, Jimmy Church. And this is the last call of the night. Who's calling? Woohoo. It's Les. Oh, Les. Hey, man, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, I wish I could go this year, man. Oh, that's Hello? right. That's right. That's right. I'm scratching my head. Yes, I know you can't make it. I know you can't make it. My bad. My bad. Next year, man. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. And it, it's going to be great next year. Well, you know what, though? And I'm glad you're the last call of the night. And and uh, and we'll roll credits together if, uh, if I can figure out how to do that. But um, <laughs> is this. I want to do a couple of things over the next year with 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 everybody, and I'm serious. I th- I think uh, w- I do want to get a bus together, and I want to roll to Roswell um, next oh, July fourth. You know what I'm saying? Next July fourth would be the ultimate. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, and you know, get get a couple of kegs on board. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, yeah, and, I know what you're saying. And, and just make this uh, a, a trip and go out. But that that's one idea. And and but, you know, uh, it, it, contact in the desert is a year away. Um, uh, so yeah. w- I, I just want to plan a couple of uh, really cool events. But I definitely think uh, we need to get everybody together and roll out to Roswell. That would be really cool, Jimmy. It really would. We'll put you in the front of the bus. We'll put you in the captain's oh, yeah. chair. We'll put you there. Sweet. <laughs> uh, Rick, Rick Sinnott just said, stop reading my mind. And uh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. He says motorcycle trip to Roswell. You know, we could do that too. We could uh, have the yeah. bus and have uh, have a motorcade up in front and up in back. All right. Cool. So uh, that's it. Hey, I got to say, Les, thank you for calling in. I got to roll credits, man. I got to roll. I know. I uh, know. Thanks. You know, all the fader not to call tonight. So I figured I had to. Yeah, call you me. had to, man. And, and, and I don't know if, did we miss anybody? Uh, we missed a few, but that's all right. Yeah, it's all right. We'll do it next Thursday. So it's all good, man. All the best. <laughs> thank you, Les. No problem. Talk to you soon. All the best, man. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, definitely. All right, Leslie. I'll talk to you, brother. Bye, bro. Bye-bye. All right. I got to roll credits, man. We got to get out of here. We are up against it. I got to say thank you for everybody calling in, and uh, there's nothing like it. Like I said, I was totally geeked up for tonight. Stay tuned. Coming up next is Night Watch with Todd Sheets, and then, of course, Spooky South Coast with Tim Weisberg and that famous shirt of his. Special thanks to Keith Rowland and Art Bell. I'd like to thank everybody who called in tonight. It's just a, a special evening here on Fade to Black. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm and Mark D. Kovar. The announcers are Steve Harder and Mark D. Kovar. Music is Doug Aldrich. Show intro is performed by Space Boy, who called in tonight. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Dark Matter Radio Network. I'm off tomorrow. I'm off the weekend. I will see everybody on Monday with Andrew Collins and our Gobekli Tepe special. Be safe, everybody. Have a great weekend. See ya.